And I had like all my little rules for myself. So it was like I had a playlist I would listen to. I had like a go-to outfit. I would do my makeup and I would try to plan dates on the same nights as my friends so that we could all get ready together. I would have a glass of wine before, like all of these things that I would do that would make me feel like more in control. Welcome back. I'm wearing the merch. I thought you were going to wear the merch. Well, How embarrassing would it be if we both wore the merch the same day, though? I, it's too much. Listen, I brought it. <laughs> Take scared. your shirt off on camera. <laughs> okay, here it is. <laughs> but I'm wearing this. Well, now, okay, so I got all fucked up because we basically did, like, two days of recording. Spoiler alert, sometimes that happens. <laughs> we're in a whole different, like, set than the interview will be, well, by the way. Well, I ran back upstairs today because you were like, I'm going to wear my Gigi shirt for the earlier. You got played. Inter- you, t- you played me. <laughs> I went back upstairs and I'm in this hot sweatshirt. Can't fool me twice. Can't fool me again. <laughs> you can fool me seven times. I'll fall for it. Yeah, so you're. this is going to feel so different than when we come in with our guest today, Eli. Feels so different. I'll be in a tank top. Well, and then we'll be in a different room. <laughs> oh, yeah. Also different. <laughs> also that. But we're still here at Spotify, but we are really making headway with our studio. And, you know, I asked for help. <laughs> I have a good grasp on a lot of things. I've been doing our sound and all of our stuff for a lot of years. But I was like, you know what? I have blind spots. So let's bring in a professional and really get some stuff going. And we're actually, you know, been working with one of the guys that works with Stiff Socks. So they were nice enough to lend him to us and yeah. we're really excited about the way it's going to look and feel and sound and everything but in the meantime we're still at Spotify so listen on Spotify and just shout out to them for for having us yes yeah, seriously all right and then thanks to a couple of other partners and we'll dive right in thanks to Babbel for supporting our show here's a special limited time deal for you right now get 55% off your Babbel subscription for our audience at babbel.com slash gge rules and restrictions may apply and big shout out to Helix Sleep take their two minutes sleep quiz and they'll match you to a mattress that will give you the best sleep of your life helix is offering 20 percent off all mattress orders and two free pillows for our listeners go to helixsleep.com slash gg and use code helix partner 20 Yes, and thanks to Daily Harvest for supporting Girls Gotta Eat. Get yummy smoothies that are ready in minutes without shopping and prepping. Go to dailyharvest.com slash GGE to get $30 off your first box, plus free shipping for a limited time only. And we'd like to thank Skims for supporting our show. Skims has over 100,000 five-star reviews for a reason. Skims bras are now available at skims.com, plus get free shipping on orders over $75. Okay, you know what I'm going to do? I usually don't do this. Let's open up to feedback on um, what you guys think about the angles and the rooms like we and got, our personalities like, yeah no, <laughs> ro- roast me bitches no like honestly Raina we people are really nice to us on YouTube which people say like that's the scariest comment section it the is? Internet. and I think the people that subscribe on YouTube and they like write really nice comments but I think that like we want you guys to like the viewer experience like if you were watching on YouTube we want you to like it you know like I think we're always just like what do people want to see like do you like when we're on that across from each other at that table kind of a radio station vibe or do you like this more or do you miss the couch I don't know like of course we're not going to base it on like one or two people but I'm just curious like what people like I'm interested I am too we bought four chairs that I dragged across my lawn unpacked took out hired a task rabbit sat them all night built the chair so we have four chairs no I know we're not going to undo stuff we've already done but I'm just like curious what people like for like to watch a podcast you know, mm-hmm. I love sitting up in a chair like yes. this. I have really enjoyed it. Yeah. Now I'm a little slouchy. But, but in, just in general, watch on YouTube. It's a fun time. It is. And if you guys are new here, we have a great YouTube channel. There's clips and whole episodes. We have a full merch site, girlsgottoeat.com. Also, girlsgottoeatpodcast.shop. All the episodes are there. All the offers and everything. So if you're like, I wonder if they have an episode about this, girlsgottoeat.com. Every episode is there. You can search it. Yeah. And just one last thing. We also have a sex toy company. It's called Vibes Only. And we have premium sex toys. They're all Bluetooth connected. So you can connect them with our app, have someone control them long distance, or check your battery, which is amazing. So your vibrator never dies on you. There's erotic audio in there and all kinds of stuff. And we just did a photo shoot and we like shot some of our new toys. And we have a toy coming that is unreal. It is like I have used it. I'm like, I can't. I have to really use this sparingly because it'll like just take over my life. (laughs) We have really fun stuff coming out. This is like a showstopper. 
Oh, it is big, beautiful. It's, it's a big daddy. Yeah, it really is. Uh, yeah, we did a photo shoot with our friend Afrik Armando, and it was like seven hours, like eight outfits yeah. all day long. We did like boss lady outfits for vibes, do tour poster. Tour? We're doing a tour. <laughs> We're doing a fall tour. I miss it so much. I, miss I came it. up with a name the other day. I forgot for like big things. Our agent was like, he goes, I, I said two possible names. He goes, whoa. He was like, I usually hate when my clients tell me a name they have for a tour, and I like both of those. And I was like, thank you so much. So we're really excited. But yeah, this new big daddy toy, big mommy, big pussy. Big, big, big orgasm. <laughs> big O. Yeah, so we're really excited. So just you know, keep it in mind. Just yeah. get excited. Save your money. <laughs> And we are uh, re-releasing some stuff that's been out of stock pretty soon. Mm-hmm. So we're excited. You can get that all at vibesonly.com. I want to just like kind of say something a little bit more on like a serious note. And then, you know, we'll get into how to spit on a dick. But I just feel like I wanted to address like what's going on with women's rights right now. I feel like every day it's something new and horrifying with the, you know, conservatives, Republican Party, and obviously it's tied into Trump as he's going to be the candidate. And as of now, this will be a few weeks from what happened in Alabama with IVF and with mm-hmm. embryos and women scrambling who had done IVF. And, you know, people knew that was going to happen. You know, it was first they're going to come from abortion. They're going to dismantle Roe. And then it's going to be IVF. And then it's going to be birth control. And then it's going to be recreational sex. I mean, these real conservative people are like women are have one purpose in the world, and that's to like have babies and you shouldn't be having sex for pleasure. I mean, it's horrifying. I mean, birth control, the whole goal of this party and these people is to strip women of their rights, their bodily autonomy and their power. And that's the goal. So women are forced to rely on men, have more children, you know, be forced to stop working, working as much. And for a lot of families, stay in poverty. That's the the goal. You know, like I'm not making this up, right? Like it's just like it's it's become very apparent. Mm -hmm. And I have always believe that there are really two things that can break a poverty cycle, which are education and access to birth control. And they want to take those things away. I mean, the Venn diagram of red states and states that have these laws in place and states with the worst education systems is a circle. Like, you know, the Alabama, when they did this whole thing with IVF, they also had just gotten rid of their like lunch program for children in need. You know what I mean? Like they don't give a shit about human life, about kids. Like they just well, it's have the life, and then there's no trickle down policies on how do we support these they lives because and... they don't care and they never have cared. This is Sorry. true Handmaid's Tale. Like come to life. Like it's really, really terrifying. And then you really think about what Donald Trump did with the last election and like this could be the end of our democracy and I don't say that lightly I'm not fear mongering you know like we're watching it happen in real time and people are like we're sleepwalking towards a dictatorship Mm -hmm. and that's not exaggerated you know what I mean and so much of this stuff is completely unprecedented and I did a call that I hadn't really talked about with the Biden administration about this and we talked a lot about abortion it was like the anniversary of Roe v. Wade and we know there's a tons of other issues and we're going to get into this. We're going to address it. I know some of you guys don't like buying, but the alternative is just really, really terrifying for everybody, but for women. And, you know, I haven't spoken on this podcast about politics in a minute, but we're going to continue to talk about this. It's on my mind constantly. You know, sometimes I got to take a little bit of a break, but it's what I'm consuming day to day on social media and then the news, whether I'm like posting about it or not. And I can reference our abortion episode from June 2022. Everything kind of happened in June of 2022. And, you know, we're going to have some guests on. And as we go into the election and we just want to speak candidly about this stuff. I mean, it's so important. It's so important for women. Yeah. And it is really a war on women. And you can also believe for yourself that you don't believe in abortion and these things, but also not want other women to have this ability taken away from them. And then, you know, they have these children and God forbid in this society, these children are gay, they're trans, they have disabilities. Mm -hmm. How are we supporting them? We're not. They're not. Women's right to abortion was taken away from us it is happening they're talking about birth control like truly like this is in the cards for them this is their plan if this were to happen and we would go right into the handmaid's tale which i hate to just keep referencing that it's kind of the best reference i have and it's a Mm -hmm. show that a lot of people have seen where women have really lost all their power and their autonomy like that will happen and then we would be like yeah uh, the plan was in place everything had happened to lead up to this no one is surprised we can actually see this coming that's why it's just got to be stopped. 
So you think that they would stop at abortion, yeah. but to take the leap to birth control, you're like, that's crazy. But mm-hmm. it is happening to take the leap to IVF. I'm like, what does this what? even have to do with the right to abort? But that is happening also. No, it's every like you really it's really, really insidious of just like it's just to take all these rights and all these things away from women like their intentions are so evil, truly So anyway, it's just on my mind constantly. And, you know, I used to be really, I don't want to say more outspoken, but I can't let it consume me all all day, every day. Mm -hmm. So I just kind of like a lot of times I am just really informing myself and talking about it with friends and at dinners and things like that and not necessarily on my platforms, which I don't, you know, it's important. It's an important year. We got it coming up. So don't think that we're not. We always used to, of course, you know, talk uh, during election years, we'll always talk about women's rights and Mm -hmm. the election. And we've had Elizabeth Warren on the show. We are really committed to just uplifting voices that provide information. And Ashley and I aren't your main news source, you know, Mm -hmm. but we want to lift up women's voices and support them and help people to vote not against their own interests. You know? Yeah. Okay. All right. Dick stuff. <laughs> Let's roll right into sucking dick. Okay. We got this email. Really caught our attention. <laughs> Sub- <laughs> Subject line. Is there a sexy way to spit on a cock? <laughs> hey, ladies. Love the pod. Hey. Thank eh. you for doing the Lord's work. <laughs> I love your advice on a recent hookup experience I had. I was making out with this guy while standing up and things started getting handsy. As I was jerking him off, he asked me to spit on his cock. I've never been asked this question from such a distance before, and I had no idea how to act. So she's standing up, jerking him off, and he's like, spit on it. Okay, yeah. It took me a second, too. I was like, okay, she's standing. I have to get a visual yeah. logistically. He's like, get your spit down there. I've never been asked a question from such a distance and had no idea how to act. Do I spit on his dick from a standing up position <laughs> like guys do? What is she? If guys are spitting on each other's dicks if they're standing? No, like, <laughs> that's so funny you interpret it that way. I think she just means like I'm a guy standing spitting, you know. Oh, just like, like, like hock Yeah, yeah, yeah. And what if I miss? Stop. She misses his dick. It just lands on his thigh. Do I bend over and politely spit on his dick? How do you politely do it? Does a sexy way of doing this exist? SOS, teach a girl how to spit and polish. Not the polish. (laughs) What? She's going to do a little like. (laughs) From a. (laughs) Okay. From a standing up. Like. Are you allowed to get on your knees? Are you allowed to spit in your hand and then put it on the dick? Okay. Again, I wasn't there. Again, you guys thought I was. In case you guys weren't clear, this is an email and not a firsthand experience. (laughs) Yeah. (laughs) I think he wants a blowjob, right? I think, like, that's his way of being, can we move from handjob to blowjob? Or maybe he means her hand's a little dry and it would slide up and down his dick a little bit better if she loved it up. Yeah, love that take. Hot take alert. (laughs) And I do that sometimes when I'm, like, jerking guys off. I'll spit in my hand and, like, Mm. get that on their (laughs) dick. But I'll usually lick my hand. I'll get a lot of saliva on my tongue and then, like, deposit it yeah. on my... I'm not spitting, like, where there's, like, that long trail. No, no. I think he means, like, let's get this a little wetter. Wetter, yeah, which we sell a great lube for that. I don't think way. anybody wants you to be fully standing and try to hit your mark. Right, exactly. If you miss, that's insane. That's, like, what stuff you do when you're bored as a couple. You know, like, that's just stuff that you're like, you don't know what to do on a Saturday. You've had a few mimosas at brunch. You're, and you're like, like, stand up, stand see up. If you can hit my dick from standing. <laughs> <laughs> I love that she was like, do I bend over and politely do it? Also, if he is also standing, I feel like your target is swaying a little bit. Like, if he sits, you could probably spit on it a little more easily from a standing position. Mm-hmm. I don't think he's asking you to try to hit the target. Yeah, stand. I, I think, think you're he right. wants you to make his dick a little bit wetter. Yeah, and at just big picture, just is there a sexy way to spit on a cock? Like, let's remove her whole, like, I'm standing, oh, no, kind of situation. Like, in general, I don't think you need to worry about that. Just doing it in general is sexy enough. And in my experience, this is a great thing to do when you've been drinking a little bit. I mean, again, you know, all respect for people who, who don't drink. But if you're a person who's like, that's a little kinky to be spitting on someone's dick, this is just, just try it after you've been out drinking. Like, it'll feel great. That's, you know, this when you have that naughty, dirty sex, and then you can incorporate that into your sober sex life. But I'm more of a slobber. My mouth's already on the dick, and I'm, like, letting saliva just like drip down their balls but have you ever <laughs> but have you ever had someone ask 
spit on this dick. Yeah, that's, I've, I'll probably put my mouth on it and let the slobber come down. I'm, I don't think that I have a lot of experiences where I'm spit, like the way the guy spits in your mouth, like I like. Yeah. I, mean, I don't think I'm spitting on a dick the way somebody spits in my mouth. I okay. mean, unless somebody, like, sp- I mean, if you specifically request it on the menu, I'll do it. Here's the thing if a guy says spit on my dick, which, you know, I've been asked, and just you, literally anything you do will be hot. I, I guarantee. I mean, well, I don't know if you got a real phlegmy, like maybe not, but like I wouldn't get too in your head about it. Like if he, they ask and you do it, that's mission accomplished hotness. Right. <laughs> you know what I mean? It's interesting you bring up drinking because I find that my mouth is a little dehydrated when I'm that's drinking. True. Yeah. So what I like, I, not to like hawk our own products, but I like our suck and blow gel mm-hmm. because it activates your saliva glands and just makes your mouth a little bit juicier. And if you guys don't know what that is, we have a flavored oral enhancer and we have different seasonal flavors. But one like drop of it makes my mouth salivate a little bit. And then I got a lot of juice in my mouth. Yeah. I'll spit on your dick. Just spitting all day. I mean, that's so funny. Like if a guy's like spit on my dick, you're like, how about this? <laughs> Hold my beer. You go grab your vanilla frosting blow gel. You're like, just you wait. But also to your point, is there a sexy way to do it? They've asked. So whatever you do will be sexy. Yeah. If you just spit on it, they're like, I just requested this and it happened. Well, and this is, you know, she said, what did she say? I was making out with a guy. It doesn't sound like this is her boyfriend. I mean, this stuff to me is so funny. Like when you are in a comfortable relationship with somebody, like you do this drunk you know and then you're like the next day he's like babe remember you spit on my dick last it's night type two fun yeah and then you're like yes exactly type two fun if Raina talks about this you can recap it the next day and get turned on but then you can be like well did you like it like should i do more like what do you like about the spitting more force less more polite like you know <laughs> these things are so funny to discuss as a couple and be like tell me how to do it better if you liked it, you know? Totally. So. It is one of those things that feels a little weird in the moment. Then you can talk about it the next day. It turns me on the next day. I can masturbate to it. Like, look how freaky I was that night. Yeah. It is type two fun. Yeah. Sometimes in the moment, it's a little weird. So uh, <laughs> is there a way to stand up and spit on a dick from where I'm licking my hand standing? I am so dead to think that if she would have done it from standing and he would have been like, whoa, <laughs> what whoa, are you whoa. doing? <laughs> and she's like, you asked, you asshole. Don't gaslight me now. You said spit. I spit. What if it just like hit his knee? You just had like yeah. a wet knee. He was no, walking it's around like on the floor. Tail. You have to like clean up your spit on the floor. What if you had to walk around a bar with like a loogie on your knee? You should wait for it to dry. No, no. <laughs> the bar. Are you, are you picturing yeah, why that a bar? I well, I'm picturing not a place that has a couch or a bed. Well, that's funny. <laughs> Thank you. Thank <laughs> you. His dick was out at the bar. No, it's funny that you pictured a public place. You think this is a bathroom? I pictured a single stall bathroom. Stop. A place where your mind goes with this email. Yeah, a place where you don't want to put your knees on the floor. There's no couch or bed available. I'm picturing some dude's apartment. But you don't think you would just be like, let's move this to a place a little bit more comfortable for me? (laughs) That is so funny. I wonder what everyone else was picturing when you saw this. Rain is like, definitely the bar at Bua. That is what I was thinking. No, I wasn't. I was saying Spring Lounge. The bar at Spring Lounge. Yes, here. Doesn't even latch. You're just spitting on a dick and somebody opens the door. I don't know if we've ever shared this friendship story, but Spring Lounge in New York is just this divey place. And I think Spring Lounge is the first time I ever saw you. And then we did the dinner. I was with Melanie. I know. I get confused. I'd have to like run the tape. You were but... with a friend. You were with a couple. You yeah, were two friends. friends. Yeah. yeah. But we go to this bar, whether it was the first or second time Rain and I ever hung out back when we got back to the States uh, after we met on this trip. And she walks in. She like looks so cute. She was with her best friend. And she's like looking around. She's like, where's my cokehead ex? He's usually here. And it was just so funny. You were scanning the room. For Owen. The, for your cokehead ex. <laughs> if you run into a bloated guy named Owen at Spring Lounge who's on too much coke, he used to make me talk on his balls really hard. <laughs> There's the tea. <laughs> okay. So I am just going to roll right into telling you guys about skims. I recently got some skims as a gift. I got some stuff. This isn't what we're talking about today, but I just, I always want to talk about how like we really love this brand and to the point where like my boyfriend's gifting it to yeah, me. Yeah, but I recommended to your boyfriend and he okay. was so excited. And he followed up with me and was like, what do you think she would like? Like I saw they were dropping a new thing and you and I had been talking about it. And then yeah. he did not hear back from me and like doubled down like, um, hello, tap tap. <laughs> so he just, he got me some stuff from the Valentine shop, which we're not really talking about today, but just like, I don't really have any of the lingerie. So it was just it's like a little like, all their drops top. are so fun though yeah yeah and like this neon shirt and yeah so they're just great for whatever they do but we have just been wearing skims forever the bras are so so incredible so we had this photo shoot that we mentioned and i pretty much wore the same bra for like everything it just kind of went with everything it's this wireless i love a wireless because i don't need like too much support it's their t-shirt demi bra i'm so obsessed with it but i love the push-up bras 
Like they are my favorite push-up bras I've ever worn. What I've found before sometimes with, I don't know what it is about push-up bras that I've worn in the past. Like they kind of cut into your skin a little bit. They leave you looking a little lumpy. Mm -hmm. You know, you have kind of like weird bulges and stuff. Like they're just so smooth and seamless feeling. Mm -hmm. Like I wear them with like my skin tight, like turtlenecks that I wear, like other skin type skim stuff. And like, it looks like I have a smooth silhouette. So they just do bras like nobody's business. I mean, the no-show balconette bra. Oh, that's so sexy. That's the sexy, sexiest bra. Again, the fits everybody, the t-shirt bra. The fits every t-shirt with the underwire is my yes. favorite bra. I sleep with it every night. It's and so I, good. I sleep with the skims boy shorts and like the, the fits everybody bra every single night. It's my favorite thing. Yes. And so Raina loves that. The standard t-shirt bra that has the wires, which I have that too, and I love it. But this wireless form t-shirt demi bra, I'm like so obsessed with. They have ones that have just like a more plunge that give you cleavage. And we can't recommend them enough. And the colorways, of course, you just have- Colors are great. Whatever. If you want to match your skin tone, you can. Or if you want to have a little pop of color, you can. And so these are the best bras. Like I just threw out of my other bras, like anything that was kind of in the same vein. I was like, I'm not never going to wear these again. Let me make the space for more skims. And of course, match them with your cute boy shorts and your panties and your thongs and all of that. But we're just kind of focusing on the bras today. But obviously, just like follow them. I mean, their campaigns, I can't even keep up. You know, everything they do is just so dope. And we are such fans. But get on those bras, treat your titties right. Shop Skims Bras at skims.com, now available in 62 sizes. 30A to 46H. Plus, get free shipping on orders over $75. If you haven't yet, be sure to let them know we sent you. After you place your order, select podcast in the survey and select our show in the drop down menu that follows. The best way to learn a language is immersion, living where the language is spoken, using it every day. But if that is not in the cards for you this year, as it probably isn't for most, you can still learn a language the second best way, and that is with Babbel. Ashley and I travel all the time. It's my most favorite thing to do. But when I'm in a new place, it is really important to me to be able to at least order food, ask directions, speak to merchants without having to like consult a language app all the time while on vacation and somewhere else. And Babbel makes that really, really simple. So there is no better way in 2024 to learn a language than the science back language learning app that actually works, Babbel. And they have 10 minute quick lessons. They're designed by over 150 language experts to help you start speaking a new language in as little as three weeks. And it's designed by real people for real conversations. I mean, I don't even remember taking languages in high school and middle school. I just learned like collections of words, but not really how to like string sentences together and have conversations. Mm -hmm. And they have so much to choose from. They have 14 language courses, French, Spanish, Italian, all kinds of things you can pick from. And there's different ways that they help you make this approachable and accessible. It's rooted in real life situations. We can't recommended it enough. Over 16 million subscriptions have been sold. That is so many. Mm -hmm. And here is a special limited time deal for our listeners. Right now, get 55% off your Babbel subscription, but only for our listeners at babbel.com slash GGE. Get 55% off at babbel.com slash GGE, spelled B-A-B-B-E-L dot com slash GGE. Rules and restrictions may apply. Okay. Really enjoying my life right now. I have an embarrassment of riches with reality television. We have Love Is Blind, Ugh. Vanderpump, and Summer House all oh, on at the my same God, the time. Trifecta. I can't get enough of it. I can't believe this is happening. Love Is Blind. <laughs> now the reunion comes out tomorrow or in two days or something. This week, I woke up at six o'clock in the morning today <laughs> to watch new episodes. <laughs> to watch new episodes, I was like, "This might be one of my favorite episodes of all time." Of, all time. of like, it's coming from her. Love Is Blind, and yeah. I'm just. I keep wanting to hate on Vanderpump, but I can't stop watching it. I love Summer House. We're so happy it's back. Mm -hmm. I just, I'm really, I'm loving it. I'm living for it. And we'll try to get some people on the show, hopefully. From all these shows. Yes. <laughs> That's from all, from all these shows. all of yeah. them. Okay. So I wanted to talk about something. I am in a love triangle. With me and Sparkle <laughs> Like a true love triangle. And I wanted to share the story. So <laughs> over the holidays, <laughs> like over Christmas time, I had seen... A friend of mine who I love, and she knows this whole thing, she had gotten this huge influencer package from Wawa. Which, which is pretty crazy because I feel like you have been really – listen, you, you tell your story. But you introduced me to Wawa, and I think about it on the daily. No, that's the thing. I have been just giving free advertising for Wawa. I have lifelong allegiance. I've introduced so many people to it. I I'll go out of my way on a road trip just to hit a Wawa. Yes. Like Always. I've been this – unpaid spokesperson for years, right? And if you guys don't know, it's like, a, you know, East Coast thing, convenience store slash gas station. Not every Wawa has gas. There are some standalones. Oh, I didn't know that. Yeah, oh, growing, I didn't know that, actually. Growing yes, up, like the one, our yes, local one was no gas. So, and they just have great hoagies and now like, apparently they have pizza. I haven't tried it. And they just, they're it's amazing. It's a thing. You know, they sell merch and it's like a thing for people and like, you know, 
Pennsylvania, Delaware, and like beyond, whatever, the tri-state area and beyond. They've expanded. So I saw her get this whole package. And basically, her fiance is from Pennsylvania. So they sent it when she was home with him. So there was a reason. She, they didn't like send it to her. She's from Chicago. We're like, whatever. It's Kate Steinberg. I don't care if you guys know this. Her and I talked about it. And her and Chad, I told them all about it. And I just like saw red. I was like, I cannot believe this because they have snubbed me. And what they did to me was like two years ago, they asked for my address and they were like, we love that you got, you've been hyping us. And then they never sent me anything. And I was waiting, Raina. Like I was... Uh, I'm really excited that they acknowledge me and my love for the brand. I love Wawa. Every time we take a road trip, we do so many Instagram stories, yeah. being there, ordering sandwiches. We promote it yes. so heavily. And I have bought the merch. Like, I've got it Christmas. as gifts. Yeah, like, I have the hoodie. I've worn it on yeah. a podcast. Like, I am out here just, like, promoting them constantly. And so when they asked my address and I just, like, waited around, just like, you know, a kid waiting for, like, a package, like, waiting for daddy to come home. He never comes. You know, just, it was just, like, so sad. And then, so to see her get all this stuff it just like triggered me so hard and I was like fuck them and I just felt so mad and so I went to Royal Farms which is another convenience store slash gas station known for their fried chicken fried chicken. famous fried chicken it's the first thing I ever ate on my way home with you it's Delaware. good it's delicious yeah it's not it's different than a Wawa hoagie different vibes but I'd prefer Royal Farms for the fried chicken and so the Royal Farms is the closer to my parents' house. So I go there and I just had a great coffee experience. Their coffee bar is elite. They have it like fresh. It, you push a little button, like freshly grinds. I will say it's better. I like okay. the experience better than Wawa. So I basically posted on Instagram and was like, I'm a Royal Farms girly now. Like Wawa has snubbed me. All in good fun. I wouldn't drag anybody. You know, like I tagged both of them. You know, like this is my jam. Royal Farms right away. They're just like in my DMs. Thank you. Can we send you something? Just like a sweet, like, you know, they're on me. Right. And I was like, thank you so much. Whatever. Wah was in the DMs too. <laughs> We're so sorry. We want to make it up to you. Let us have your address. And I'm like, oh my God, it's happening. Right. So I was like, but no, they still have to work for it because, you know, fool me once. And so I get my Royal Farms package. It was really cute. I did an unboxing. It was like a hoodie. It was like a fried chicken keychain. It was like really nice, whatever. This came, you know, like weeks later. Nothing from Wawa. And at this point, right, it's like six weeks since I asked for my address. So I like knew it wasn't coming. And I'm like, why would you toy with my emotions like this? Like, <laughs> this is the second time this has happened. You've asked for my address. After all I've done for you. After all I've done for you. And like, so when I did my Royal Farms unboxing, I like low-key tagged Wawa. And again, in just a fun, lighthearted way, like they've snubbed me twice now, you know, fooled me twice. I can't believe this is happening again. But anyway, here's Royal Farms. It's like, come to save the day. And I'm still like a Royal Farms girly. Wawa in the DMs again. <sighs> We're so sorry. Oh my God, we want to make it up to you. And I'm like, I can't. I, and I please see the conversation above this where I gave you my address. Yeah, years now. We're in <laughs> years. So I also can't be clear enough. I don't need this swag. This, this is all in good fun. You know, right now I don't even like stuff, right? Like just cluttering up our home. But it's the principle. Also, you know, these are national chains. They'll be years. Fine. They'll be stringing me along, <laughs> right? So the package came from Wawa. Yeah. Okay. It is so over the top. <laughs> it's a denim jacket. <laughs> the denim jacket it's this full set there's like sandal slides a wawa slide it's so big it is this like giant box of They're like stuff. fuck her stuff. send her everything stuff they don't sell yeah on the, on the merch shop that's like only at the office yeah <laughs> they had to like break one of those glasses just to like get the stuff in there but this is the most stereotypical love triangle wawa is such a fuck boy this is exactly what a fuck boy would do. They also just gave you just enough for you to keep hanging on. You're like, well, I guess I have to like Wawa again. Yes. Like, I moved on from them. I found someone who loved me back. You mourned it. Who showed up for me. Who was secure and for me. That know was what? Royal Farms. Wawa sniffed it out. Yes. And you were happy. And they said, hi, can I ruin that for you? <laughs> Wawa said, oh, wait, she's moved on. Let's do a grand gesture. Yeah. Hi, can I destroy that for you? <laughs> just classic. <laughs> Fuck boy, classic hoagie, classic fuck boy. <laughs> so listen, I can do have both. You know what I mean? From here on out, you know, I feel like they made up for it, even though we know their intentions was just like, you know, they waited till they thought they lost me and they try to get me back. They sniffed out that you were happy. Royal Farms is the like securely attached <laughs> boyfriend you want here in this situation. But I don't have to commit to either. Like from here on out, I You're think it's like middle? whatever's more convenient. I am always going to go to Royal Farms to get that coffee when I'm at my parents. And, like, I'm going to go to Wawa for a hoagie and I'm going to Royal Farms for my fried chicken. I can do both and support both. I'll get gas at both. Well, they don't have the same things at both. I can't exactly. order my double turkey on a wrap that they don't really use for sandwiches. Right. I can't. Yeah. <laughs> 
I get extra meat at Wawa. <laughs> and I'm taking the meat off. Raina has walked around. To, she's basically in the kitchen with them to ask if she can have it on a wrap. They won't give you a wrap. Some of them are like, we Sometimes can't. they do, though. Oh, 90% of the time yeah. they do it for me because they make burritos. They have it back they there. They have the wraps. So if you guys have never been to a Wawa, which I grew up in Pittsburgh. We, had, we don't have we that sheets. there. We had sheets. But I like love a sheets. you walk up to the screen and you order from the screen and like it's not an option with a sandwich to get it on a wrap, but they have burritos. They have them right next to the bread. And so they will do it. You just have to ask. And then the one time I got into a fight with them, the woman was like, we can't account for it financially. And I was like... <laughs> What does that mean? And she's like, we have strict inventory of everything behind the counter. And if we give you the bread, there's no way for us to count for the fact that we gave a tortilla away. <laughs> and I was like, charge me for the pack of tortillas. Of tortillas. The yes. whole pack. Just like whatever you need to do, I'll pay the $4 for the pack or the 10 cents for the tortilla. Whatever you need to charge me, I will pay for this. And she really was like, policies, policy. She's the only person that gives me a hard time. It was once. Sometimes I got to catch them. I'm like, Sky, excuse Rural me. Rural Farms would never. They'd Double like, you meat. want this fried chicken on a wrap? Yes. <laughs> There's a Royal Farms very close to my brother's house and my parents' house. So it is a sign and it's very convenient. And I love their coffee bar. They have better creamers. But when I pay for that coffee, right, it's like a dollar. It's like one ten or something. You where you can't that? get a coffee in LA or got New York for like under like three fifty for just a black coffee, you know. A small black coffee. Definitely. So it's just, I feel like I'm going back in time when I get that dollar coffee. That's insane. And it's good. I didn't know you could have anything for a dollar. <laughs> I know. I didn't know you could get a piece of gum for a dollar. So this is my love triangle, and it's just very funny. Like, I really have them where I want them. You know, they both <laughs> are vying for me. And I'm going to support both. All right. Well, thank you for breaking your silence on your love triangle. You texted me that you're in a love triangle, and you sent me a Wawa photo, and I was like, I don't know what she's talking about. Well, I sent you the photo of that, like, denim jacket. I want to see it on you. Watch YouTube. Will you put it on YouTube? I was planning on doing the unboxing soon, and so I'll just kind of put that video on YouTube. So if you guys missed it on my Instagram, just a watch denim YouTube. jacket. It's got the little bird on the it. collar. I cannot believe they sent you a denim jacket. <laughs> You're going to die when you see this set. I cannot wait to see this set and the slides. Oh, you know what? The slides don't even fit me. They're small, six and a half to seven. So oh, I'll take them. Yeah. <gasps> yeah. Oh, my God. Yay. They should have checked my shoe size. Royal Farms would have. Yes. That's so typical of a fuckboy, too. Gets you something another woman's size. They're just like, that's what was available. I feel like I'm sure she's just small. <laughs> anyway. That's that is so on. funny to send people stuff that's very size dependent and not ass. I feel like you six could look pretty at, small. I feel like you could look at my Instagram and be like, that bitch has She's big feet. She's not a size six. Yeah. Totally. Yeah. You look at me and you're like, give that's, her a five. That's a tall bitch with big feet. Like, yes. I feel like I give that energy. I would give you a nine. Yeah. What do you wear? Eight? I'm a nine? Nine and a half. Okay. Yeah. I think I should know your sizes. I do a nine sometimes. I do a ten sometimes. These are nines. Uggs, nines. Okay. Anything like fancy, like Louboutin. Jimmy Choo, Stuart Weitzman, like bigger sizes. They run so small. I'm like I've, a 46 in Louis I Vuitton. bought a, Louis, a pair of Louboutins. Like we first started touring, I was like, I'm going to sit on stage with these like red bottoms. Yeah. I have never I've been more proud of something that I hated wearing more in my entire right, life. They were tough. I put them on eBay. I just like couldn't wear them. They made me feel like yeah. I was going to be sick when I was walking in them. They are made for like tiny feet, but like I have a slender foot, but I still have to like size up by like two sizes. There are videos on YouTube about how to fit into a pair of yeah. Louboutins. $800 pairs of shoes you're supposed to put on a sock, slip your foot Crazy. into the Louboutin and blow dry the leather until it it expands. That is unhinged. For eight hundred dollars, you needed to do that for me. Yes, for close to a grand, you're like, got to get out my blow dryer what? and blow dry my heels. No, <laughs> so no. humiliating. Okay, well, we are going to get into it with Eli, but I'm just going to tell you guys about Daily Harvest. I had my smoothie this morning. I had a Dayton almond smoothie this morning, and I have a smoothie most mornings. We love Daily Harvest so much, and the grain bowls are so, so good. I have been loving this shakshuka grain bowl. If you guys know, you know that I one time made it. I was so excited to eat it, and I spilled it outside. So ever since, I've gotten some replacements, and I've really been enjoying that. And we just love this. I mean, there's no gluten or fillers or seeds oils, added sugars and starches. So it's really just like delicious, easy prep smoothies. So you can say yes to delicious, easy to prep smoothies that never leave you wondering what's really in your smoothie. You can go to dailyharvest.com slash GGE to get $30 off your first box plus free shipping. So 
I mean, I just kind of want to focus on the smoothies today. And this is something that's such a big part of my life. I mean, you guys know I used to have the mitten cacao smoothie every Monday. That was how I started my week. That was part of my routine. And I've branched out a little bit, but I love the Dayton almond. I love the banana almond. I love the strawberry cashew. There's a mango and greens. And if you, there's ones that are a little more like chocolatey too, and ones that are more fruity and just whatever you're into. I'm a fruity girly. Yeah. I go fruity. They're always putting out new stuff. I never get sick of it. I it is the easiest thing. I swear smoothies should be easy to make, but like they're not for me for some reason. And it's like the perfect amount of everything. You just put a little bit of like liquid in it, whatever you like. I usually put like a little coconut milk, a little cream. Yeah, I do almond milk, whatever you want, regular milk, oat milk, like whatever you feel. Yeah, they just take the guesswork out of it. So you don't have to go buy a bunch of ingredients and put in your blender and wonder if you got the portions right and it's gonna taste good. So again, ready in minutes, so easy. And we have a discount for you. So take the guessing out of eating well and try Daily Harvest. For a limited time only, go to dailyharvest.com slash GGE to get $30 off your first box plus free shipping. That's dailyharvest.com slash GGE for $30 off your first box and free shipping. And finally, the thing I have slept on every night for so long in my bedroom and the guest bedroom, uh, Helix mattresses. I am obsessed with them. And just the whole ordering experience, just go to helixsleep.com slash GGE, take their two-minute sleep quiz, and they'll match you to a customized mattress that will give you the best sleep of your life. Use the code HELIXPARTNER20 and you'll get 20% off all mattress orders and two free pillows. I love their quiz. They make it really simple. Do you like a firm mattress? Do you like soft? Do you like memory foam? Which part of your body do you sleep on? Front, side, sleep? Do you sleep with other people? They have stuff that's good for big and tall, stuff that's good for kids. So a lot to choose from, but it really does just take two minutes. And I love the delivery experience. It just comes in a box, delivered to your house. Mm -hmm. Really simple. Just open that box. Boom, you got a mattress. Mm -hmm. It is something that I miss so much when I like go to my parents' house or we're in a hotel. I'm just like, I really miss that Helix mattress. I love the pillows so much. It just makes my night sleep so good. I sleep a solid eight hours every night and never miss a full eight I hours. I sleep so well. I'm so excited to move and I'm getting all my stuff from New York. So I'm getting my queen bed, which was the Moonlight Lux that I'll have in my guest room. And I have guests coming the very first weekend. Jenny and Karen are coming. They're sleeping oh, yeah, the well, well, second weekend after I move. And then I have my Midnight Lux king in my room and then I have a little loft where I have like a little twin day bed up there and that is the midnight regular so three helix house <laughs> and Tessa has the helix yeah. now her and I both have the dusk I like to switch it up I sleep on my back sometimes sometimes my front you know yeah, I was a back sleeper, but I've really been on my side. I had kind of like a back issue that my brother, who's like low-key a doctor, diagnosed. And he was like, I think you should be sleeping on your side. So I really have been. And like those pillows, just Next game level. changer. And everybody just sleeps so differently. I never even like realized this. I took this quiz, how different everybody was from me. Because I'll just sleep full face down. You do love it. I have so many pictures of you. Back when we used to share hotel rooms, just like face planted. Face planted. That's how I like to sleep. But I'm, yeah. apparently that's not the norm just for Just arms everybody. out, palms up. Just Yeah. And they offer a 100-night trial and a 10- to 15-year warranty to try out your new Helix mattress. It's just great. We love it. We get the best night's sleep from there. And we have an offer for you. Helix is offering 20% off all mattress orders and two free pillows for our listeners. Go to helixsleep.com slash GGE and use code HELIXPARTNER20. This is their best offer with Helix. Better sleep starts now. Okay. Okay, guys, we are very excited to welcome our guest today. She is a multifaceted creator, writer, TikTok star, and podcast host <laughs> of the show, Miss Congeniality. She has been hailed as Gen Z's Carrie Bradshaw by the New York Post and has been featured in Forbes, The Today Show, Good Morning America, Cosmo, and more. Her debut book, I Didn't Know I Needed This, The New Rules for Flirting, Feeling, and Finding Yourself, is out now. Please welcome a proud cancer sign, Eli Rallo. <laughs> I'm such a proud cancer sign, <laughs> I threw that in. So <laughs> listen, I want to take some credit. Raina does the intros, but I made notes. It's, Ashley's, it's Ashley's first intro. <laughs> yeah, I made some notes, and I was just like, "You like we talked about it when I did your podcast. Yeah. You're the most proud." No, I love it, and I think about you every time I see those things, like the signs as whatever. Yeah. And cancer gets like absolutely shafted. I'm like, Ashley's probably somewhere crying. Like, yeah. somewhere crying. It's one of the most like viral things we ever talked about on the podcast. Pie so show. many years ago. Yeah, yeah. cancer. It's like napkins. Dasani. Yeah. <laughs> Honey, just the crust of the pie. Yeah. It's like so, so embarrassing, but well, they're like, jealous. And you no, know, they're jealous. They're jealous. We have just so much to us. So dimensional, so emotional. Yeah. What are you? You're a Taurus. I'm a Gemini. Oh my God. And I'm, you're like a a Gemini. I'm just really like a couple weeks behind Ashley. Yeah. She's my first like cancer best friend. Really? Yeah. I, 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 I gravitate towards Aries, Virgos, and Geminis. 
I love Gemini women. I think that it's the best sign, like the most powerful, fierce, kind of like brave and also like they're not afraid to say things. And I always need like people who aren't afraid to like be confrontational in my life. So I love a Gemini woman. <laughs> I don't think I'm confrontational, but I try to be. You're trying to get better about <laughs> it. I'm working on that part of myself. Some people are like, I hate confrontation. I'm like, I'm trying to actually be more confrontational. Yeah, you're like, I'm actually, I want to be confrontational. I run towards it. Well, Ashley's teaching me to be better. Yeah, you must have some like air or fire sign in you if that's like. Well, it's, I, I can't remember how much we talked about our full birth chart, but like I'm Cancer Sun, Cancer Moon, Scorpio Rising. Oh, it must be that. It's little Scorpio. so much emotion. Yeah, there's so much emotion cool. there, yeah. though. But what are you again? I'm Cancer Sun, Cancer Moon, Sag Rising. Oh, right. Okay. Yeah. But then the rest of my chart is all Cancer. So it's like very mm. emotional. You sound really LA. You're from New York, but you sound like you're really part of the LA Wait, culture. Do I? In a good way. <laughs> yeah, in a like, good way. Oh my God. <laughs> like, yeah, I like, love it. I mean, until I moved out here, I didn't like talk about this stuff as much. It's very like LA in a good yeah. way. And you're here doing a book tour and you're wrapping yes. up your book tour. Yes. I love visiting LA. I don't know if I could live here. Like, you guys inspire me though. Like, watching your journey of moving here and being like, oh my God, we are so glad we moved here. Like, I felt like. It was 50-50 when I was listening to you guys talk about that. I was like, are they going to like it or are they going to miss New York? But like, I love that you guys love it here. I mean, I hated L.A. in my 20s and then even probably early 30s. Like, I, It took a while to come around to it and then yeah. I've started to love it and then I forced Raina to love it and now she <laughs> might even I love like it, it more. more. But Can you imagine if you both didn't like it though? Like it needed to come yeah, together at the I same time. It really did. But you just like – I feel like it would be really hard to move here in your young 20s. Yeah. We've heard it's really hard to make friends. Like – I don't think it'd be fun to be here, like, cheap. You know, like, yes. it's like New York. You can just, like, live cheap. 100%. And I said that the it other would day. be fun. Yeah. And, like, a really fun life. I mean, yeah. It's so. isolating here, you know, yeah. if you don't, like, have friends already. But I really miss New York. I've been missing it so much. I said, Ashley, I want to go back as soon as possible. Oh, my God, actually. Yeah. Not New York back. Live. But just visit, visit. Well, anyway. So. Okay. So I first heard of you because people would send us your list that you included Girls Gotta Eat on. Oh, my God, yeah. So, like, years ago, you yeah. would just do lists of kind of, like – I mean, I feel like they've taken off now with what's in and out, what's hot or not. But you would just kind of be like, what would it be like? This is what to do this week. Yeah, like a to do like rules for this week, for like ways week. to elevate your life and yeah. just make your life a little bit better. And I'd always include like podcasts because I feel like having a podcast that you listen to every week is like something to look forward to. And I feel like people yeah. forget so much. Like having something to look forward to like makes life worth living. <laughs> and I always like loved Mondays because I'm like, oh, I know that I'm getting GGE. Like I know that I'm going to listen Aww. to it. I've been listening to it since college. And so like that was like such a huge part of like my life that I wanted to share that with other people and then I found out like so many other people either listened to it or were like I started listening because of you like now I'm obsessed with them and I'm like of course you are they're the best <laughs> oh, thank you it's so nice and we'll talk about that more because I know that's a big part of your book is like little ways to treat yourself and like love your life and I feel like no one talks about this enough. Like, you really need to, like, get excited about little things in your life. It's, like, what keeps us going. 100%. Otherwise, I just, like, would get into, like, such long funks or, like, depressive mm -hmm. periods because I'm, like, I have nothing to look forward to. Like, <laughs> to look forward. I'm, like, I'm just, like, sitting here. I don't know. And then I was, like, okay, I need to, like, get out of this. And now I'm, like, I literally embrace every single day. Like, I'm obsessed with, like, getting my coffee. I'm obsessed with, like, every moment. Like, I love to, like, live life to the fullest. I'm, like, am I toxic positivity? I don't know. <laughs> I am like such am a I joy. The problem? Yeah, I'm like, am I the problem? Are <laughs> like, you happy? Yeah, I'm like such a joyful person now. I just picture like skipping out, like on my coffee. Like, like, like literally me, like I'm so excited about life. Like I just love it. And so it's been fun to like share that with my audience and like, I don't know, bring people together on like the basis of just like having more fun. I want to unpack that. I do want to talk about the motivation for writing the book because I think you speak about it so well. It's so interesting. But I, can we talk about how you became so happy to do everything? <laughs> <Yes>. <laughs> I think that I was like, are you happy? I think I realized like over COVID and then like I was living in New York City going to grad school like during the pandemic like I moved in like July 2020 so it was like pandemic okay. times and I was just like in such a bad period of my life like I'd been single for like a few years but I was always like an extreme serial dater and I was trying to like force myself to like do all these like zoom dates like meet people like mm. trying to like get into a relationship like create this like perfect adult life that I thought that I was like supposed to become because I would even like look at people like you guys and be like oh they're adults but I'm not like even though I'm like 22 like and I'm like a technically illegal adult and I live on my own and I'm in grad school like I didn't ever feel like one I was like how can I like I don't know push myself to be better and I always felt like I was so like hypercritical and then one day I kind of realized that like I was the one like creating my own misery like I was creating like all of the energy that was making me miserable from like putting pressure on myself like 
to go on dates and like meet someone like, oh, you have to be in a relationship. You have to have this perfect job, like all of these things like that was all coming from me. So in the same way that I created misery, like I could also create joy and like why not just like choose to do the things I wanted to do, whether that was like notice how I felt after hanging out with certain people. Like, do I like them? Do they like me? Do I want to keep seeing them? Or like, do I want to be actively dating? Do I not want to be actively dating? Like, do I want to go out tonight? Like, what do I actually want to be doing? And I feel like that seems so obvious, but it's actually like not. Like, we forget about it. I think so many people forget to like check in with themselves and say like, I created this narrative. Yeah. I can change the story. It's not obvious at all. People have whole families without thinking if they wanted them or not. (laughs) Yeah, no, seriously. (laughs) Seriously. (laughs) Seriously. No, people do all this shit that they think they're supposed to do yeah but and they're like oh if I do it I'll feel good but it's like no the only way you're gonna feel good is if you do what you actually want to do right and for so long I was doing what I thought I was supposed to do and like partially even going to grad school was that and Mm. I don't regret it because like I met like my best friends and like it was the right stepping stone but like that was all because I was like oh this is what I'm supposed to do I'm supposed to be this like serious adult person that Mm -hmm. like gets a degree and does whatever and then I like wasn't happy and Mm -hmm. it was like well I chose this for myself you can choose your choice yeah I bet you see that a lot with people in grad school. Like, I just, I didn't know what else to do. Yeah. Not saying that was your story, no, but you kind of was. Just... It kind of was because I was a theater student in college. I really wanted to be like a writer my whole life, but like, how do you just like write books? I didn't mm-hmm. know. Nobody has an answer. Mm-hmm. And so I was like, oh, I'm going to study theater. I'll study playwriting and producing. I'll be a producer. And I hated it. It wasn't creative. And like, again, you have to be so confrontational and assertive. I'm just not that way. Producing, especially on Broadway, is like all straight white men, which is crazy because people think of theater as like so diverse. Yeah. It's like everybody at the top. It's like the same as the top anywhere else. I just didn't like it. And it was my senior year. So I was like, what the fuck do I do? I just want to be a writer. Like I want to write fiction, nonfiction, poetry, plays. But I was like, what is the path? And so I was like, oh, I should get my master's in journalism because then at least I'll still be Mm -hmm. writing. So that was like the point A to point B. But it really was like, I don't know what else to do. And then I couldn't get a job. COVID happened. And I had already gotten into Columbia. So I was like, I'm just going to go and figure it out. Mm -hmm. And yeah, I feel like mixed feelings about it because again I met like some of my best friends in my life and it challenged me but also like I took out loans for it and that was really expensive and then I was like in debt during COVID without a job like after graduating it was just like you know I have complicated feelings about that choice and I feel like a lot of people choose grad school because they're like I don't know what else to do I mean I wasn't ready for the world after college if I had gotten into an Ivy League master's program I probably would have done that I was like yeah I'm gonna go there and then it was like imposter syndrome like it was like a crazy time I almost feel like I blacked out for the whole time it was like an eight-month program I don't even remember it. <laughs> like, what happened? I don't know. So then kind of like short story for people who may not know as to how you got to where you are today. I mean, what blew you up on TikTok? I mean, like how that trajectory? Yeah. So I was a 2020 graduate of college. So like I was supposed to graduate college. And then one day in March, they were like, leave. And we were like, OK. So my so brother and I like packed up our or... houses and like yeah. drove all the way home. And at that point, I had gotten into Columbia like three days before the world shut down. So I didn't even know like if I was going to go or not. Like yeah. world shutting down all these choices. I get home. I decide like to commit to going and my parents own restaurants. So we were working the entire pandemic because they were open. So it was like 10 people per restaurant, like masked up, like Mm -hmm. curbside pickup, all that shit. Yeah. And we would get home after a long day and just want to like fuck around and like open wine and like watch movies or whatever and one day we were just like screwing around on tiktok and i uploaded a video of like this family viral snack jar that we had Mm -hmm. that like everybody in the town like everyone knew about it like everyone in my life (laughs) no seriously like everybody in my life i love that i I, like grew up in such a small town like people would just Mm -hmm. come over and be like taking a cup and like scooping out of it stop i love this and so we filled it up and i like accidentally posted it on public like and that sounds like such a dumb story but I was always making TikToks and putting them on private so that my friends could like see them I would make like videos of college or whatever so I made that video meant to put it on friends only so they would see it because it was like funny but I put it on public it like blew up and then the next day people were like what is this so I made like a really funny video (laughs) explaining it that blew up so I ran with it for like a few months but then when I moved to New York I made a video being like hi guys like I'm leaving the jar at home like I'm moving to New York like I don't know if you guys give a fuck about me but like I actually love doing this so if you want to stay like stay and I actually got like more followers from that video which is a very 2020 story like of people blowing up on TikTok Mm -hmm. it was a different time for TikTok and like people like growing on TikTok and it was like such a special moment and I went to New York and started making all sorts of other content but I never really took it seriously until I was like working my nine to five post graduating from 
Columbia. I still think it's relatable. I think so many people are like, should I put this out into the world? It's embarrassing. Or maybe it's mm-hmm. stupid. It's like, see, people like it. People yeah, really liked it. You don't yeah. know what people are going to gravitate towards, latch onto. And it seems like it brought you a lot of joy. Yeah, it was like a fun thing. Like it was like a, I don't know, everybody has that thing they were doing during the pandemic, mm-hmm. whether it was like some workout they discovered or like <laughs> a show that they watched that they were like so like enmeshed with almost that was like this for my family like we were yeah laughing about it thought it was so funny that it was going viral like we never would have thought though that it would have been this now like it's kind of a weird pipeline <laughs> but it's I'm glad that you also didn't feel beholden to do it because this is what people it's the biggest complaint of going viral for something that they have to do forever you yeah. know like they're like I have to do this forever or I'll lose all my followers and you were just like I'm gonna just not do the jar but I'm, not, I'm gonna do this other stuff and I hope yeah. you guys stick around and people were like okay I'm the jar girl I'll, I'll, I'll see what else she yeah, let's down. Let's she was, pick it up. And then like it was really funny because like I had a hundred thousand followers on TikTok when I left and moved to New York. And then by the time I graduated, like a year later, I was like around two hundred thousand. So it wasn't like a ton of growth, but like there was growth. And then I started doing the lists, and that was like two hundred to four hundred overnight. Like I've never seen something happen mm-hmm. so fast. That was like crazy. And around that time, people were like, Oh my god, you were the girl with the jar. You're like the jar people had lost me for a From, bit. Yeah. Like the plot was gone. And then I like came back to them through the the lists and it's interesting because I feel like every era that I've had on TikTok I've gotten like some new friends and it's fun it like builds a really diverse and interesting community of people I just think people not that this is going to be relatable to everybody but I just think people who need to hear this who are creators who think they have to stay in this one lane forever like it's just it's not fair and you don't have to and you might lose some people along the way but like why would you not do what you want to do what's authentic to you like we have a friend who I'm not going to like put her on blast but she's like caught in this like this is her lane and everybody wants more 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 that's what they come to expect and she's like I want to do this like other thing but yeah. like I know it'll just tank and I'm like well, what's the alternative you gotta yeah. do this thing forever and she's yeah. so cool and fun and I'm yeah. like I want to see every facet of your yeah. life right now like um, people will come eventually like it might yeah. not be immediate but anyway I have so. a question for you and yeah. then I want to like maybe like were specific types of lists really like hot button type like what what do people gravitate towards and did that lead you to writing the book yeah so the thing that people gravitated toward at first was like I did rules for every day of the week. So the first one ever was like rules for brunch and that one did decently well. And then I did rules for a first date and that one was incredibly viral. (laughs) And then I did rules for a Sunday and that one was so viral that I did Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, and Saturday. (laughs) I love it. And then those ones, like then it just like was the next and next and next. But it's crazy. Like I don't forget about them. Obviously they're like my lifeline literally, but I was doing them. That was October, 2021. And that was around the time I left my nine to five. I signed my book deal in January 2021 because my literary agents saw the lists and then they saw the Substack blog that I was writing of personal essays and they were like, this needs to be a book. And I like took a break from posting lists for a while. I was posting other content about writing my book, whatever. Every time I like come back to the lists and I do them again, it just brings them to a whole new side of TikTok. And like that's a lot of times how I see like my biggest growth jumps. Like I have to take long breaks in between or else like it's, you know, oversaturated. But I think like a year later in October 2022, I did it again, like brought back Mm -hmm. the days of the week. And that was like another 100,000 new friends. And I think, you know, I'll probably do it again soon. I always like bring back certain lists like first date or rules for getting out of a funk, like ones that I think a lot of people might resonate with. And yeah, that definitely did lead to the book. Okay. I don't want to harp too much on like social media and stuff, but I think especially Gen Z and people are trying to find their voice and what they want to do in the world, whether it's on the internet or not. I think you've done such a great job of staying authentic to yourself and for lack of like a better phrase, like blocking out the haters, you know, and you posted about it too. Like you've done a really good job of both of those things. And do you have tips for that? Because I think there's this comparison thing. I mean, everybody just gets caught up in like comparing yeah. themselves to what everyone else is doing, listening to the critics. Yeah. You know, I think it's like a mixed bag with the the haters and like, I think it's two separate things, you know? Totally. Yeah. I feel like if you want to post online, you just have to like almost get over yourself a little bit that like people are going to talk about you. But the reason that anyone is talking about you, so long as you're not being like a bigot or doing something like problematic, like if you're a good person and kind hearted Mm -hmm. person, like the reason that people are going to talk shit is because they wish they could be as brave to like Mm -hmm. let down their guard and like do something creative or put themselves out there and they can't. So they internalize that and they dislike you and a lot of times it's like other women which just like makes me sad so I always try to look at it with like almost pity like I feel kind of bad for you that that's how you're spending your day and your energy yeah and I just think that in terms of the haters you know like sometimes it is hard and like I've gone through periods where I'm like I don't know if I can do this like because I'm just like anyone who knows me I'm very friendly like kind I'm 
trying my best, putting my best foot forward. Like for that many people to like hate you is such like a, a feeling nobody should experience mm-hmm. and like psychologically not normal even. Right. None right. of us are trained to experience to deal with that. Like that like and I loop. think though yeah. like what's really, really helped is that like my people in my life have been my people for the longest time. Like I have a really good family. I have a very loving and caring boyfriend who's been a part of this like every step of the way. And like those people know me. And even though like my internet persona is as authentic and real as possible, like I know myself and like I know that I'm doing my best. I know I'm a good person and then the people in my life know I'm a good person. Mm -hmm. And that also keeps me grounded. Like I've obviously gained new friends, but I've never lost any of my friends that I had when I started Mm -hmm. all of this. And that community helps so much. I feel like – I feel like sometimes you can get caught up. Like if all of your friends are like people that are doing this kind of stuff yeah. and then all you talk about is like the haters and the drama and the tea, like it kind of weighs on me. I'm like, mm. I, you know, I need to have those people that have like been my backbone in my lifeline this whole time. Totally. I totally agree. And I mean, we're really lucky. We don't get like a lot of hate online. People are, our audience is really so kind. But like I used to like read one comment. It would like ruin my day and I'd be yeah. so upset. And I've had to remind myself like I didn't know this person three minutes ago. So why am I letting somebody who chose to spend their day tearing me down ruin my day? Exactly. Like, you know? Yeah. Exactly. Or like, I don't know, I, I think on TikTok <clears throat> too, like the trolls are just, it's nasty. It's really bad yeah. for content creators. Like I don't even know why. And I, I think what I've realized though is TikTok yeah. is like an anyone can platform. Mm -hmm. And because of that, the jealousy like runs rampant Mm -hmm. because people see like regular, regular college kids or whatever, just people blowing up overnight and they really can see themselves in those people. Mm -hmm. So the jealousy is higher than like an Instagram baddie model where it's like you can't see yourself in her. (laughs) Yeah. Yeah. I mean, and that's something that Rain and I didn't grow up with. Like that wasn't like a thing. Like there were no regular people that just got to get famous overnight. Overnight. Like it was just like, no, these people are, you know, child actors and they go on to whatever. Like a kid from Smyrna, Delaware doesn't even, this isn't within her realm. So it's like it makes you view it completely differently. 100%. But it's not attainable. I'm so I mean, grateful. And like, ultimately, I try to focus on the positive over the negative because it's like mm-hmm. 0.01% of the people are totally. like haters, you know? And then like the comparison thing, do you just kind of like stay the course and like keep your blinders on and just do what is authentic to you? Yeah. You know, I think like I still struggle with that, to be honest, like on a day to day, because it's like I have chosen this like life where I'm juggling like being a creator, but also like being mm-hmm. an author and like having my podcast. So, like sometimes I feel like I'm not a good enough creator and I'll like look at creators and be like, I'm not doing a good enough job I'm not like going on brand trips or like posting enough PR like getting enough brand deals or like going to events and then I'll look at like my author friends and like writer community and be like I'm not writing enough Mm -hmm. I'm not like going to enough writing retreats I'm not like doing enough there but then I have to remind myself that like this is such a unique position to be in one Mm -hmm. that I like built myself that I'm like so proud of and grateful for and like there's no one right way to be me or to do it. And I think I've also been using the mute button a little bit. Like whenever I just I'm can't just, recommend it. Enough. Yeah. I didn't even like think about using it. And then I just started to be like, oh, I don't I can't unfollow this person for like reasons totally. of like social whatever etiquette. But I don't really need to see their content, nor would I like follow it. Did we not know each other yep. in person? And I just mute and it makes me feel so much better. They I cease said, to exist. They cease to exist. You I, like I muted somebody and I was like, I thought to myself, I was like, God, she must be not doing well. And then and I'm then like, no, like, no, she I'm is muted. doing great still. Yeah. I just haven't seen and it. And it's also no shade to those people. Like, Of course I, It's actually the opposite. Yeah. I mute people sometimes because like, I can't see this. It yeah. makes me feel bad about myself. Yeah, and it's like not their fault. I just don't want to be around it. Totally. And like, you do you, I'm going to do me kind of vibes. During COVID, I unfollowed a ton of like fashion influencers because I was like, I don't need this content. But I muted a friend, not a close friend, an acquaintance of ours the other day. And I, it just was making me feel kind of a certain way about myself. Yeah. And I feel like, great. Yeah, yeah. you're like, she I'm better than wrong she's great it's just yeah i look at it and i'm like i don't need this energy right now no normalize the mute it's a good <laughs> totally it's a great feature okay so the list about dating went viral crazy people loved it and you've written this book and i love that the book is about friendship and the relationships you have with yourself and taking a break after a breakup and, but also a lot of like first date early stages stuff so let's talk about why you wrote the book oh my gosh yes i think You know, this is, like, a cheesy thing to say and, like, definitely, like, a way that we, like, push the book in, like, a marketing way. But this is really, like, what I wished I had when I was, like, 18 to 23, Mm -hmm. I feel like. I spent so much time relying on, like, male validation and affirmation. I was such a serial dater. I viewed dating in such, like, a heteronormative way. I, like, couldn't break out of that. And, like, I could listen to, like, my mom give me advice or anyone tell me anything and I'd still just, like, crave and, like, need that validation and affirmation and, like – 
now I look back on that person and like I don't regret my decisions but I just wish that I had like my now brain like I could be like oh we don't do that or like you don't tolerate that or put up with that behavior and I feel like I was like again miserable for so much of that time and I was like choosing my own misery so I wanted to really write it in order to like show people how to elevate their life in tangible and accessible ways but especially through the lens of relationships because I feel like this time in our lives like from the time that you're in college to like early 20s post-grad like relationships it feels so fraught whether it's dating or whether you're in a serious romantic relationship or going through a breakup or a friendship or just like so much is changing around you and your relationship to yourself changes and I like also just wanted to normalize that conversation because I didn't hear enough people like talking about that kind of stuff I was like I just want to talk about this and I want to make people feel less alone or maybe learn something or just laugh and feel a little bit better about their day-to-day because it is so like just a weird time yeah we think about that all the time like we didn't have any of the shit when we were like navigating yeah like the the, our 20s and then we're just in this weird echo chamber with our friends giving each other terrible advice (laughs) no seriously yeah i don't know i didn't have like an older friend to even tell me what to do (laughs) no i had no one telling me what to do and my friends were just like block him and like obviously i wasn't gonna do that and And cosmo's like like, how to suck a dick better that's like all they cared about yeah seriously i'm like reading that i'm like oh this will win him back like (laughs) i'm gonna get my ex back (laughs) Like, I was just so – I had, like, such a terrible track record with, like, just letting people walk all over me. And I had a terrible ex that I went back to, like, actually a million times Mm -hmm. that I would have literally died for this man. And he did not give a fuck about me. Like, Mm -hmm. not a fuck. And, like, it's so obvious now. Uh. But then I thought that there were so many things I could do to win him back. And Mm -hmm. it's like, bitch, he broke up with you, bitch. And now he's having sex with you (laughs) every weekend because you are giving that to him. And you're saying, like – you can have me totally like, we have friends that still do it still yeah. do in their 40s you know <laughs> <Seriously. Yeah. laughs> so you talked about this on Nick Vile's podcast I was listening to you this morning but I'm sure you talk about it in the book as well about how you and it goes to your story like you didn't stop to say to yourself like do I like this do I enjoy this how am I showing up in this experience like wh- how does this person make me feel can you like speak about that a little bit sure I think I was like almost like more comfortable avoiding the conversation of do I like myself like I almost Mm -hmm. like loathed myself so much that I didn't even want to face like getting to know myself instead I would let like other people's perceptions of me like shape who I was and so like it was like a lifeline like I needed that validation so going on a date or going out was never about like oh do I like this person and did that make me feel good and did I enjoy that it was more about like am I going to come out of this advantage? Like, is he going to like me and like want me? And like, okay, Mm -hmm. that means I'm worthy. If I have his validation and affirmation, even if it's just like that brief ego boost, I can like avoid for a longer time, like Mm -hmm. dealing with my own demons and like getting to know myself. And I think like, I realized, I don't know, after I took my like long dating break that I talk about in the first chapter of the book, I like decided to like take a break and not actively date at all. And then the first date that I had back actually was this older guy and the situation where I could tell that he was like doing everything in his power to keep us casual. And he was also being pretty honest about it, but he was like older and mature. And so like he was nice about it, but that's not what I wanted. Like I wanted a relationship. And that was the first time that like he told me like, I'm actually just like I've never dated someone this young because I was like 22 and he was 31. So he was like, I've never dated someone this young. I just got out of an eight year long relationship. Like I'm not looking for anything. And that was the first time I was like, okay, then then we should just stop. And like I remember like that feeling like leaving his apartment, like going in the subway and being like, I literally just did that. Like and, wow. but Instead of saying so empowering. like, I know I love it. Yeah. Instead of being like, instead of being like, I want to win by getting you to like me. Yeah. Instead of being like, okay, me either. Like we want the same thing. Yeah. Great. Like I'll just stay here and we'll continue to do this thing where we get sugar fish and watch music videos and like hook up. Like I didn't want that though. He was great, but like he was honest with me. Mm-hmm. And that was the first time that I was like, no, like, what do you want? And I remember feeling like, whoa, okay, that's possible. And I also like don't feel bad. Like I thought I was going to be like crushed and upset. I was definitely disappointed because he was awesome and smart and like hot and whatever. Mm -hmm. But I was like, wait, I just like freed myself up to find what I actually want. It was such like a weird realization. Again, seems obvious, but it's like not. I mean, I also just love those wins for yourself when you actually take a moment to be like, this is growth. Yeah. <laughs> as corny as that might sound, like I am learning, I'm growing. I did this thing that I couldn't have imagined doing a year ago even yeah. and like really celebrating those wins. I don't know if you guys like felt this way, but I'm 25 and I feel like whenever I turned 25, prefrontal cortex like developed. Like I started like whenever Kylie Jenner was like, I'm just realizing things this year. I'm like, no, 
<laughs> me too. Like I really am. Like Tess is intrigued. She's like, wait, when? Yeah. No, I I like I feel like like a fog cleared over my head, which is like bad and good because I feel like I realize too many things now. But also, I remember like so long in like college and like early twenties being like growth, like growth, growth, and I'm like, what was I grow? Like what growth? Yeah. Like what was I doing for said growth? Like you can't just say like, oh, this is growth. Like, you just say you actually growth. have to like fucking work on yourself for there to be yeah. growth. And I remember like turning 25 and like realizing that I had been like actually working on growing for the first time Mm -hmm. opposed to being like growth and then there's like no growth like the growth is not in the room with us right like the actions matter yeah Yeah. that's actually like show that there's growth also I don't want to like shit on 22 year olds like you have to like live the life to learn the lessons sometimes you know like you can say to yourself like I want to be better it's like but you haven't lived any life yet to be better at I thought I knew not that you are I just no no, no, I don't want to when I was 22 I thought I knew like literally everything I thought when I I thought I was 16 I was like I could live on my own yeah no in college you know it's like no you can't like I don't even know how money works you know you're just like you look at your you parents, you know like, everything. Do you even know how the world works because no. I do. You're yeah. looking at your parents like, you guys are pathetic. Yeah. You know, you're, you're just joke. like, I should be. <laughs> no, seriously. Yeah, I should run the household. No, seriously. That's like exactly how you feel at 16 and you kind of ride that wave. Like, yeah. college is a scary place because every person there just thinks that way. They're like, I could fucking run this shit. And I'm like, I'm scared right. of you. Like, literally, I'm scared of you. Right. I like went to college in like my first apartment. They were like, rent's like $265. I was like, a year? <laughs> like I had no concept. Yeah, like, I was like, "Oh my god, when? that's that's a lot." Wait, every I month think. I have to pay that? Yeah, like, <laughs> are you for real? <laughs> like, like, Mom, did you know this? Did you know this is how things worked? <laughs> Sorry. Also, anyway. being a mom is probably so stressful because Ugh. you have to sit there and not like be an ass to your kids when they're like, "Fuck you, mom! I know everything." And it's like, and not she's punch literally... them across the room. Yeah, she's I know. She's like, "No, you don't." But yeah. she's also been there, so like she can't be like exactly. No, you don't. Like, yeah. <laughs> parents like dedicate their lives to you they plan all these special things and you're just like this is so stupid you're like, like i watched one tiktok video that says you're stupid and no, I know seriously better. and now i know better <laughs> so we do want to talk about some of the dating stuff in the book but you are in a relationship now yes for how long like a three years three years okay yeah. and then we asked what people wanted to ask you on our instagram and people wanted to hear about manifesting your partner and, yeah you know i know that you like speak on that too so we just want to hear how this happened. Do you guys like manifesting? Are you like manifesting girlies? I feel like you do. Well, yeah. So people say that. I mean, I feel like I did that with my now partner. Yeah. Like I said, the first episode of 2023 that I was like, this is the year I'm finding a partner. I did like a tarot reading and I really just like put it out into the universe and yeah. it just like really did happen. So I feel like a example of that completely and I th- really believe in it. Yeah. I think you can call it whatever you want, but yeah. it's making a decision about like how I want to see my life and only making decisions later that satisfy like that decision you've made earlier like if you want to find a husband then you don't date guys that are just don't want relationships like you said you left that place and you just like went to the subway and you were like he doesn't want a relationship that's fine with me like and you pivoted and Mm -hmm. to me like that is manifesting because you just you put out into the world this is what I want this is the goal and you stick to the goal yeah I think people like over complicate manifesting that's exactly what it is to me it's really like me believing that future me has what current me wants so current me has to work to get what future me has Mm -hmm. and just be positive and like I'm very big on law of attraction like what you put out is what you'll get in return so after I took like my big dating break and I wanted to get back into dating and I started dating that guy then I was like okay I'm actually gonna like I saw TikTok I like watched a video I was like I'm gonna like learn how to manifest and basically it was like write down like exactly what you want, be hyper specific, just write it on a piece of paper and then keep that piece of paper. And I did that. And then the other part is like believing that that's coming to you. So again, Mm -hmm. that's like picturing future you with that person. And it's like, get really, really specific. Like what does their relationship look like to their family? What does this person Mm -hmm. like do on a day-to-day basis? What do they do for work? What do they look like? Like all of that stuff. What kind of stuff do you do together? And then you have to really picture that person coming to you. So I just did that. Cause I was like, you know what? Like, I feel like I'm really ready for someone to come into my life. Even though I have work to do like I feel like I'm in a good place and then I this is like a crazy story but after that I was like really living in like law of attraction like manifest land and I had matched with this guy on hinge in like June of 2020 but it was like obviously COVID so we never met up but we had exchanged social medias and then a few like months down the line it's now like December he like hopped on one of my TikTok lives and he was like commenting (laughs) and he kept being like do you remember when we matched on Hinge and finally after like ignoring it because I thought that somebody was like trolling me (laughs) I was like 
I don't know who you are. You're like user eight five whatever. So I was like, but if you have a way to contact me, you should. So this guy like slides into my DMs and was like, LOL, that was me. But like, I'm in a relationship now. Like I was just like fucking around and like commenting on your thing. And I was Sir. like, okay, haha. And I was also in a period of my life where I was like incredibly afraid of like doing the wrong thing, getting canceled, whatever. So mm-hmm. I was like, oh my God, like what if his girlfriend sees this and thinks that I'm like, I don't know. Like even though that's like crazy. Pursuing it, yeah. Exactly. I was like, I don't even know why he's chatting me. Maybe he's just friendly, but I don't want his girlfriend to see this and think anything. Right. So I responded and was like, you should set me up with one of your friends and we could all go on a double date. Because I was like, why is he even reaching out to me? Like I think he wants to be friends. I don't really know. Right. And he said like, I'll see what I can do or something like that. And then a few hours later, like sent me a group photo and was like, what about this guy? And I was like, I don't know. Maybe I should just say yes. So I said yes. I did not know this where the story is, I did not was know. going. This yeah. is crazy. I said, like, sure, I'll go on a date with that guy friend of yours. And then I canceled the date two times because <laughs> the first time I, like, just got nervous. And I was like, ah, blind date. Like, I don't know. I don't know the fucking first guy, let alone this guy. Like, who are these people? <laughs> I had not even, like, really seen a picture of this man. I'm like, I don't even know him. And then the second time there was, like, a family emergency. And I felt so bad that I'd canceled twice that I, like, texted guy number one. And I was like, can you let your friend know? Like, I swear to God, I want to go out with him. I'm just, like. My grandma died. Terrible. Like, literally. And and then I was like still unsure because I'm like blind date. That's so weird. And at the time I was doing this series on TikTok where I was making like lattes and I was putting salt in them because it's supposed to like cut the bitterness of the coffee. I don't know. It was just like a viral clickbait yeah. thing. And like the second guy who's now my boyfriend was like watching that. And then he like texted me a video of himself going to Dunkin Donuts and like getting the exact order that I get and then like putting salt in it and taste no, testing I it. I feel like I'm going to cry. And I thought that he was like, like really so sweet. adorable and like whatever that I was like, okay, are you free? Like actually like when are you free? And then we went on our first date and I was like oddly like, oh God, I'm about to be in so deep. I have to like cut off like this whole roster of men that I have like going on in my life. I have to like clear the bench fully because this is like, I think going to be my person. And it's just he, weird because he's, he's actually, my starting lineup. he's just very identical to the thing I wrote on the paper, which, oh is my like God. Very, which is like very, very strange. Like I ended up showing him like a while after. The list. I, was, like, I can't like do this now, but like I'll show it to him and like, it's weird. He's just like very similar. Whether or not that's like, I actually manifested it or like that he was just such a good match for me. And I really, for the first time in my life, like actually went out to find what I was looking for. And knew yourself enough. Either way, know. that's yeah. still manifesting though, like to Raina's point. Well, it might've made you go on that date when maybe before you wouldn't have because before you might have said like that's too nice that's yeah. like not what I'm looking somebody that's gonna watch my video and like do this thing that yeah. I suggested like but I think you probably were in this headspace of like this sounds really flattering and nice yeah. and I do want to prioritize somebody like that yeah, yeah. and then I, I just like showed up as myself too yeah I wrote a list that had 29 things on it a year prior and it, my boyfriend's like 27 of the things you know yeah. one of them just that he doesn't live here <laughs> but I also just I don't know. I like that he just didn't give up, too. Like, I think yeah. that's important. I yeah. Like that's part of my story, too. Someone's just like, no, I really want to go out with you. Yeah. Like, I know I'm, you've blown me off twice. But I'm like, not going to give I'm up gonna on keep, you. Yeah, there's no ego surrounding it. Like, fuck her. You yeah. know, like, Do you, you guys was... go on dates, double dates with the, yeah, with yeah. the original couple? <laughs> Do you? Well, okay, they're not together anymore. Oh, no. But is but, that still his friend? Yeah, that that's was still his friend. friend. Okay. And it's so funny. Like, I met my boyfriend, like, before ever meeting this other guy. Like, right. Because, like, we went on our date. And then, like, obviously, I eventually met his friends and then me and this guy meet and it's like hey like and now we're like lol he's gonna have to give like a speech if we ever get married one day at a wedding because like I really did match on Hinge with his friend, and that's, like, how well, we met. We also love a Hinge story as a yeah. partner of the podcast. Yeah. So it's still technically a Hinge no, success story. No, it's like a Hinge success story, low-key. <laughs> I love that's it. That's the thing about Hinge. Like, anything can happen. It's just a great way to meet people. Yes. Like, really. Also, I like your ad. I think some women are just, they're turned on by a guy who's in a relationship hitting on them, and I think some people would have just leaned into that, you yeah, know? Was, like, like You just like, pivoted it immediately. Like, yeah. yeah. Like, I don't have any that, friends? I don't know that everybody would have done that. No, I was like, yeah, like, what, what are your friends like? Like, I I don't know if we should be friends because I was just like even if he's genuine because I do believe men and women can be friends and like you guys have tons of friends who are men who are married I slept with most of them though. <laughs> You're like to be honest like we have a vast but yeah. like you know you guys have friends who are married and like they're your guy friends Absolutely. and so like I knew that and I knew that it, that could be okay but also I was like in the odd chance that that's not what this is I just want to make sure that this girl if she were to ever see this mm-hmm. knows that like my number one priority was looking out for her and being like well, let's all go on a double date together. And then, like, we ended up hanging out with them for a bit, but then they broke up, and now my boyfriend is still friends with him. So, so you talk a lot about how people's perceived value when they're in a relationship versus like being single. And yeah, we kind of want to talk to you a little bit about that because I feel like you really are still someone that really like 
lifts up women that are not in just relationships and it's just like important for you to like see the value in both and I think you wrote like singlehood as equal in value to being in a serious relationship but we love talking about that too yeah honestly like you're a podcast and like I think so many podcasts of women just like talking about sex and dating helps with this kind of thing so much like you guys should know that like the work that you're doing is really helping people to feel like just normal on their mm-hmm. everyday lives because you guys are just honest about what you're going through and, and what you're experiencing and like if I didn't say that you guys have helped me I'd be lying like you guys have really helped shaped my mindset so much around this but I think for like a really long time I had the mindset of like oh like I'm looking for a missing piece like Mm. I I need to be whole but that would like insinuate that I was like somehow like broken or like not full or whole before which is just not true and I think that what I've really learned in dating my boyfriend is I love him so much and I hope that this is my forever person but like the end goal of every relationship is not forever and if the end goal of this ended up being like a lesson that I learned or something like that would be fine and you know no one is going to be forever until somebody is so like every relationship pretty much is going to end really like that's what the statistics mm-hmm. show so I think that like learning to just like like being single was so important for me and then learning to view being single like not as a waiting room because for so long I was like this is my waiting room like I am waiting to go get in a relationship and that's mm-hmm. like the destination and that was just such a shitty way to think because then yeah. I was just like not liking my life mm-hmm. when I wasn't in a relationship which is so ridiculous like why do I need a man to like like my life? Why can't I like it when I'm single and just chilling? Or why do I always have to be actively dating? Mm -hmm. It's so much pressure and like so much stress. And now I always say this, I'm in a very serious relationship. We live together. Like I hope that it's going in the direction that we talk about and plan for. But if it didn't, like I think I would stay single for such a long time because like I fucking like myself in my own company. And this person who's in my life, he is like so special and important to me. And at this point, if we didn't work out, it's going to be because our priorities switch or like something doesn't align. It's never going to be because we don't love each other. And I think I would really just be single for so long. Like I think I would Samantha Jones it. And I would love that too. And that's not what I want necessarily. Like I'm so happy in my relationship, but I feel like people think that that mindset is taboo almost. Mm -hmm. And I just like don't think it is at all. Like I'm comfortable and confident saying that that's how I would feel like. And I think that's okay. You know what I mean? Yeah, absolutely. We love that. I mean, this quote I wrote from you, I think this was in your Cosmo article. You were just talking even about friendship love. And you said, I feel like I could sustain myself on female friendship for the rest of my life. It's so important to me. Like, those are like the forever relationships, not always. But, you know, when you talk about the importance of keeping the friends and things like that, and it's like, there's so much other love we have in our lives. And we talk a lot about like, why is the romantic love on such a pedestal and everything else falls by the wayside? Like, if you were to break up, if anyone were to break up, there wouldn't be like an app absence of like love in your life hopefully if you built a life outside of your romantic relationship and like back to the manifesting thing like the universe simply will not reward you if you have like a negative shitty attitude it's only going to reward you if you have attitudes of like gratitude and abundance and if you view your life like I don't have romantic love so my life sucks and I'm Mm -hmm. depressed you're ignoring all the love that you very likely do have in your life which would be platonic familial the love you have for yourself your hobbies your passions Mm -hmm. like your fucking workout class your favorite restaurant (laughs) your pet exactly that's so much love the universe like would see that and be like okay well this person isn't like giving anything to all of that love right which is just like romantic love is just like another piece of that that you could have and it's okay to want that I certainly did but it's also like what about everything else like don't neglect it I love being single I think it's great and I have all these friends and that's really nice and I look at Ashley's life and I look at her relationship I love her boyfriend so much and I love what she has and of course I want that but it's important to not compare yourself constantly to other people's lives and their happiness and I was watching this like rerun of Vanderpump Rules last night (laughs) from years ago and Sheena is like crying to Lala and she's like I'm single and all of you have this thing and they pan to all the other couples in the room and it's like four other couples and four of the five couples are broken up right it's like one of them is like Scandaval one of them was like Lala and Randall Emmett like she's crying because she wants this thing so much and everybody around her has it and fast forward two years later and everybody's life is this like dumpster fire and she has a husband and a child and she's really happy and it's important to like yeah, remind yourself that like you, should, <laughs> <laughs> like you should remind yourself that like today you should make yourself happy and enjoy what's going on because like you have no idea number one what's actually going on in other people's relationships and 100%. how happy they are or what your life will be like in a couple years versus there so like make today really happy for yeah. you I don't have like romantic love like Ashley does but like I have like all these friends I get like the pleasure of having yeah. and so many people would die for the social you life also that get I have. to like rot and be alone at oh, a higher God. volume which like I was saying to my boyfriend I was like do you miss 
miss me when I'm not here, like, before I left, because I was going to be gone for, like, seven days, and he's, like, meeting me now, like, in Texas, where we're going next. I was like, oh, do you miss me when I'm gone? And he was like, I miss you. Like, the thought yeah. of you, being with you, like, sleeping in bed with you at night. But he was like, however, <laughs> he was like, not having someone nag me about, like, keeping this place clean and tidy and, like, being healthy and, like, going to exercise. He's like, I kind of get to, like, rot out, like, yeah. throw my stuff everywhere. And then he's like, I do a deep clean right before, like, I either leave to come <laughs> see you or you come back. And I'm like, that's such a, like, a thing that when you're single, you can do that whenever you want. You're just living by your own rules. You're not having to, like, actively yeah. think of another person, which is a lovely thing to do. But also, like, the grass is green on the single oh side. Oh, my God. A rot day. Is, I was what? thinking about you on Saturday because actually, like, all these activities with her boyfriend. It was so cute. <laughs> I never left the house. 10, I was, steps, so I was fucking, the biggest no, literally. piece of shit I had ever probably been in my whole life. Like, and it was I didn't the best get out of bed day. until 11. No, it's beautiful. I in a year. And I was like, yeah. Ashley doesn't get to do this today. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah. Ashley had to have sex, put makeup on, yeah. leave the Ashley house, had to take a shower, do a plan, make reservations, talk to someone. That is so funny. You're like, I don't want her life. <laughs> but yeah, first of all, you can people that just are relationship to relationship, you know, live your truth. But I don't think you can ever really know yourself. Like the single yeah. years are so important. So important. Also, yeah, this like amazing relationship. Now I'm single for so fucking long. The whole duration of this podcast <laughs> until nine months ago. Yeah. You know, so I cannot recommend it enough. And like the life you get to live when you do whatever the fuck you want all the time is like amazing yeah, also so if you like your life being single is fun yeah it's like that's an understatement like we've like yeah. had the best life we've like lived a dream yeah like you're living a dream like look at sex in the city you cannot tell me that you watch that show and you're not like a little jealous like i watch that show and i'm like i want their lives like i want to live in new york city in the 90s with like no iphones and just like Ugh. be having crazy sex and then like getting together with my girlfriends every fucking day it's at a random life. lunch restaurant and like sh talking shit like that is the best life ever and like mm -hmm. that show i mean i know you guys like love Candace special i know you love the show yeah it's like ahead of its time like so much so mm -hmm. but I watch it today and it makes me feel so comforted. Even yeah. someone who's in a relationship because I'm like, I have those women in my life and like those are my real soulmates. And like that's like the whole message of that whole show. Yes. yes. And like you think of the scenes of the four of them together at brunch or doing whatever they're doing. You're like, that is peak life right there. Life. And then the opening of movie number two, which was an abomination. I like to pretend it was never made. It's just like Carrie and Big like fighting and in this like no. dark apartment. I'm like, that's miserable. That's like, And that's the goal. This that's marriage, goal, yeah. you know, there was one over here that's just like bright and fun and full of life. And then there's just this like married couple that's like at each other's throats and fighting yeah. about what they're going to do that night or what they're going to order to eat. And I'm not saying that every relationship is like that, but it's just kind of like, what do you really want out of life? Like, I hate when it's the inverse. People are like, God, it's so sad to just be like single and out with all your girlfriends and having random sex. And it's just like, no, I'm it's like, not. Why? It's so fun. It's like, so literally I the best. literally always think back to like, even the like most damaging parts of like my singlehood and being in college. College, though, like morning group chat debrief. Oh my like, God. sorry, nothing hits in that nothing way. Hits. Nothing. And you and all your friends are single. Yeah. Like, that's why I go out to have the debrief. No, to have the debrief. <laughs> and like, now, you know, my best friend from college and I are both in serious relationships and we take trips with our partners and it's so lovely and it's this new chapter. But I'm like, I also miss that. Like, yeah. that was also really fucking good when we were both single and we yeah. Yeah. always said we were each other's soulmate. And like, we were yeah. fine because we had each other. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. And by the way, like, making friends does come naturally to me and Ashley, but it is work and I did manifest it's that hard, too yeah. when we moved here yeah. like I said yes to everything shit I never wanted to do yeah I like reconnected with somebody I was like casually friends with in New York she invited me to this dinner with all these girls I didn't want to go hang out with like 11 girls I didn't know but like I ended up becoming really good friends with them our friend Alyssa invited us to She's something so nice. and it was all these mm -hmm. girls there we've become really close with everybody like I said yes to a lot yeah, of shit right? you've driven like an hour to West Hollywood a lot a lot to, uh, just to make <laughs> just this to friend hang. group yeah yeah, yeah. yeah. and Alyssa's like amazing I love Alyssa yeah, we love yeah. Yeah. Alyssa yeah. Amoroso and she's been on our podcast shout out her. but yeah I'm, like people are always like they love episodes about making friends and like that's not easy all the time either you have to say yes to stuff 100 yeah. i actually was saying this on tiktok the other day after my la show i did like a meet and greet and before the la show we had to do a vip meet and greet because it was like something the venue wanted to do so people paid extra and it was like a 20 minute q a and this one girl had come to that and then she actually waited afterward which i didn't expect i expected the girls that had the vip thing before not to wait after she waited after and she said that she came by herself and she was just really going through a hard time like hadn't been able to get out of bed lately and like for some reason like decided like this was going to be the thing that like got her out and like put on makeup and put on an outfit and like <laughs> 
<laughs> she was like, she had such a good time. She had so much fun and like she met new friends and everything. And I was really just saying on TikTok, go out in your community, even with a friend. You don't have to be by yourself, but like go somewhere. People do want to make friends. If everybody mm-hmm. is having the same problem yes. in their 20s of how do I make friends, that means everyone Everybody wants friends. Right. So like you have to be a friend to make a friend, to have a friend. Like go out and find those people. And like for a long time, I thought it was weird to like introduce myself to people. Like I would be like, oh my God, it's so weird for me to just like talk to a stranger. It's fucking not. That's just friendly. Mm-hmm. And like that's just being like, hi, I'm Eli. What's your name? Like there's nothing wrong with that. And right. I feel like we kind of forget that. I forget that people are a lot more introverted than I am too. And that being shy can read is like not really wanting to yeah. talk to you. And if you like connect with somebody a little bit, DM them. Talk about that thing. Go to Color Me Mind with them. <laughs> I still got to get to Color Me poor. Mind. I really want to actually go on a date at Color Me Mind. <laughs> Why can't we just go on a friend date? You know, we have not solo hung in so long. You guys don't hang out outside of right here. We hang out, <laughs> we hang out constantly. All the time. Like, <laughs> we joke that like Rain and I would never go to dinner. That'd be so weird. Like just. <laughs> Like, yeah, just I do want to ask us. you on a friend date soon. We haven't solo hung in so long. Raina's going to like make a reservation. It's yeah. Like a whole thing. But we are always together. We're here together socially so much more than we were in New York actually. Like because we moved here together and then made the same friends. And then like my friends I had coming in are now her friends. Like in New York we made friends after we would both lived there. So we did have like separate groups of friends. So like I don't know on the weekends we would like do stuff with them and so there's never like a big group friend hang here that we're both like not a part of so it is nice but like to go to dinner like I can't imagine me and Raina sitting at a bar having drinks it's like so weird I want to ask you out to do that soon we haven't spent solo time together in a while see like even besties get nervous about me (laughs) (laughs) I'm like what if she says no well I said on the podcast recently I think I did hear that I said something like well it's a little awkward when we're alone and she's like I know right I was like I was kidding you were like I was fucking joking (laughs) you bitch I don't know how to be alone well yesterday we were talking about Hawaii and Ashley's like I'm just not trying to go alone with you (laughs) first of all I did not say it like that I was like, if we're going to go to Maui, I want to have a group, go to a luau, do the whole thing. Me and you She's on a like, romantic I'm getaway? I'm going to go with you. You don't even like to do the same retreat. stuff as me. Same room. I'll go on one hike I'm going to be like you. on a sunset hike. She'll you know? like do yoga and then take a hike yeah. and I'll refuse to go. But I do want to ask you out on a solo friend date soon. Okay, you should. Yeah, you we should. Really need to, we need to bond. Let's just do a couple quick topics that you do talk about like in the book that we just think are really fun and like obviously yeah. relevant to what we talk well, about on the podcast. Speaking of dates. Yeah. That one? Prepping for a first date like an athlete before a game. Okay, I'm obsessed with this because I'm like a nervous person. Like everybody thinks that because I'm so energetic and outgoing that I'm like extroverted, but I'm really not. Mm -hmm. And I get like nervous and I'm introverted and I get social anxiety. And so instead of looking at first dates like, oh my God, this is so make or break. Like, holy shit, this is either going to be the love of my life or like he's going to hate me and like I'm going to feel bad about myself. I started to look at it more like a game, like a literal game. Like all this is is like a second date or a good story to tell my friends this isn't anything more or less than that those are the only two outcomes like Mm. I'm gonna go to brunch with my girlfriends tomorrow and talk about this or we're gonna go out again that's it and I also tried to view it like if I met a girl at a party like if we all didn't know each other and we met each other at a party like the next day I might be like oh should we all get brunch I wouldn't be like oh do you want to be the maid of honor at my wedding like and it's weird (laughs) that we go into first dates being like oh that's my husband and it's like you wouldn't act like that with a girl you just Mm -hmm. met at a party and so I had that like refresh in my mind so I was like, all right, I'm going to like prep for this and like make a routine for myself to make it more like a game. And I had like all my little rules for myself. So it was like I had a playlist I would listen to. I had like a go-to outfit. I would do my makeup and I would try to plan dates on the same nights as my friends so that we could all like get ready together. I would like have like a glass of wine before, like all of these things that I would do that would make me feel like more in control. Because I think part of the problem was I felt out of control Mm -hmm. because I'm going into an environment where I don't know what's going to happen. So making yourself feel as in control as possible, I just feel like it makes you feel confident going into it. And I've heard you talk about like making sure you have a plan after the date too. So like yeah. you're also in control of like I've chosen to leave at this time. Yeah. Leave them wanting more. That's my favorite tip ever. I always say make tentative plans for afterwards. I'm not necessarily against like sleeping with someone on a first date or going home with them or going to a second bar or whatever. Like I've done it. But I think if you're dating for a relationship, men really do fall in love in time spent apart where they get to think about you. So you have to give them that. Like, Mm. if you know that, why not give that to them? So I would always make plans afterward that weren't, like, a birthday party, but, like, something, like, more (laughs) chill that I could miss had I decided I wanted to stick around or whatever. One of two reasons. If it's going badly, then you can just rewrite your night. You're Mm. going out with your girlfriends. You're going to a pregame. You're going to go watch a movie, whatever it is. If it goes really well and you're going to make a second date with this person and you want to leave them with that wanting more, the ability to think about you and really, like, fall for you, then you're just going to go do something fun and you have a nice easy out and you're not lying about it I always recommend doing that because it's like win-win either way yeah and then if it's bad bad you know not like 
dark bad but like it's just bad yeah that's not a fit what a waste of like a contour you know like at least you have other plans like that's just sucks it sucks to like pick out an outfit do your makeup and then just like have a bad date and like go home Home? it sucks not always I mean I go home to like my dog and like love is blind or whatever you know you can still look forward to those small things you're like taking off your makeup and you're like why did I do this this and then it makes you feel like you don't want to date again yes yes whereas if you go out after your whole night is going to be like the memories you made after Mm -hmm. you're going to be laughing about the bad date with your friends and then you're going to be like okay I can go on another date now I'm good I 100% agree. and I've been saying to Ashley I've really enjoyed the last few dates I've gone on not because the dates were good it's because the plans I had right before or right after, after were, were really great. nice yeah and Ashley and I with our friend went out to this great dinner and we got dressed up and we looked so cute and then I met this guy for like an hour and a half I had an out because I was tired and it was late mm-hmm. and I like had a great night with my girlfriends and like I didn't particularly love the date but I was like I had a good night I had a good yeah, night you with had people a good that night. I liked and I didn't waste an outfit exactly yeah because those moments after a bad date when you just go home after art like you said the moments that you're like I'm giving up like yeah. I'm not doing this anymore this sucks and you're alone and you're spiraling and yeah like, so brutal. then your friends say how was it and you say horrible I'm not dating anymore yeah I'm done with this exactly <laughs> <laughs> Something else you said that we really loved was trying out a person in different settings before committing, which is so clueless, like yeah. the movie. Yes. It's like do a lap before yeah. committing to a location. No, but, but I feel like – have you ever gone on a date with someone, but it's like you go on five late drinks dates in a row, and it's like, yeah, I'm having so much fun with you when I've had four margaritas because mm. you're hot. And <laughs> four we're margaritas. A, like, <laughs> put it in your seriously. <laughs> We're like at we're at like this dark bar and like you look hot and like the more I drink the hotter you are. So then like yeah. we like go to dark bars, drink and make out. So like I think that How I fun like is you. This? But <laughs> yeah. then all of a sudden we go on a fucking walk during the day and I'm like, what the <laughs> hell am I doing? Like who are you? What time am I wasting? I really love like if your first date is like going out for drinks or going out for dinner, the next date is like something during the day. Cause yeah. like don't waste your own time. Try them on in different settings. And like I'm somebody who's like I'm a theater person. If I started dating someone and I was like, do you want to go see a Broadway show or do you want to go see theater or like whatever? And they said no, like even if they weren't interested, if they were like so anti, like then I just know like that's a setting that matters to me. And if you're not willing to like try that out and I can't see mm-hmm. what it would look like to be in that space that matters to me with you, it's, we're not going to work. Like, yeah. It's the same thing as, like, am I willing to go watch whatever sport it is and, like, have a fun time if, like, baseball means a lot to him or whatever the fuck it is. Like, right. you want to try that person out in places that matter to you, but also different settings. Because it would happen to me that I would, especially in New York, it's always drinks. Yes. It's always drinks in New York. I love this so much. By the way, I'll go on a hike with you because I love you. Actually, I'll be in different settings doing? with you. You guys are at, like, you guys are at Runyon. <laughs> You're at Runyon like, tomorrow. I she have... insulted me on a recent podcast where she's trying to no, make up for it. No, I said it was so hard to be together. <laughs> not what I said. I got okay. roasted for an hour. <laughs> it's okay. I'm kidding. We're just having fun. I had this situation that happened where there was this guy that I knew from New York just from, like, partying late at night. He was friends with some restaurant people that I, like, knew. And one night we ran into each other. I lived in New York. He lived in Cincinnati, I think. We had sex like that first night Mm -hmm. he leaves and we just start talking on the phone a lot and it was you know long distance and I really I enjoyed him late at night at these bars and I had sex the sex was fine and I enjoyed him on the phone and I was going to be in Pittsburgh for the weekend like a few weeks later and since he lived in Cincinnati or Cleveland or something it was close so we decided we'd like meet in Pittsburgh and we went out to dinner and I was like Oh, I've never like been around you at this time of day. Oh, yeah, that's like, he yeah was so pretentious, no. so obnoxious. Cut me off, ordered for me without asking me oh, what I wanted. And I was restaurants are a very important setting for me, and like liking food and yeah. being able to like be around people. And I was like, oh, I don't like this person. Well, like, the fuck are you? That was in the, the very light of day. first person I dated on the podcast. That young guy. When we first started, I was like sleeping with this younger guy. He was like ten years younger than me, and we only drank. We hooked up. The sex w- was great. And then mm-hmm. I went to dinner with him. Remember, he held the fork like this. Like, no. he, he, he like, fisted the fork. fork. Yeah. yeah. And I was like, oh, oh, I never want to go to dinner with you. Yeah, like I, And then the conversation didn't flow. Like, it was like, oh, my God, I have only been drinking and fucking. Yeah. Or, like, they meet your friends and you find yourself having to, like, apologize for oh them. My God. Or I you're like, die. this is so fucking awkward. You're like, I should have, like, tested this person out a couple more times yeah. to see how they, like, interact (laughs) yeah like via talking on the phone with this guy I was like this is my guy he's Mm -hmm. great but like anybody can show up for you on a phone call for 45 minutes also I think that's the thing about like getting love bombing and all that stuff like 
anybody can pretend to be someone on the phone, mm-hmm. like out of drinks, having sex. Like, well, it's hypothetical, right? It's hypoth- yeah, it's all like this is just a fun little thing, and then once it's the light of day, all of a sudden, like you see who they really are, it's like The yeah. Bachelor. Yeah. It's like, well, what is it really gonna be like when you guys aren't on a date in, Ugh, in Versailles? I, totally, one hundred percent. It's not real life. No. Okay, well, we had a little segment we wanted to do with you because we okay. know you love your horoscope stuff, yes. and you. I did this on your podcast with you, so I did like rip this off, but we kind of changed it to be about dating okay and like most likely to blank and then okay. you're gonna say the sign oh i love that that's okay. so fun okay okay i can start i'm gonna start most, positive <laughs> most likely to plan an amazing thoughtful date that makes you feel like you're in a 90s rom-com Ooh, i feel like it's like leo because leos i think like gratification and they like people to tell them like thank you for what cool. you did i also think so they're cool yeah because if you were gonna say <laughs> if you said like a really romantic sappy date i would have said cancer but like a cool <laughs> 90s rom-com like whirlwind date like you're mm. gonna be with the fire sign you're gonna be with the leo like they're gonna make yep. you feel like you're on top of the world like literally on fire and okay right. the most sentimental date you could possibly think of is cancer yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> it's just actually <laughs> yeah it's just... hard to shop for her for christmas i'm like she's gonna get me this painting she's commissioned i can't yeah. You gotta plan a nice bath for me. <laughs> I got her charm bracelet this year. I was like, I'm killing no, you it. Always give me good gifts. Okay, most likely to mansplain the stock market, Marvel movies, fantasy football, politics, etc. On a date, Virgo. Vir- <laughs> Okay. I just so Virgo men like I'm so sorry like if anyone's dating a Virgo man I just want to like give a disclosure like I don't judge based on sun signs I judge based on your whole chart totally. so I don't believe anyone's a truly bad person but yeah. like Virgo but suns are? Virgo suns I think they're they're going to mansplain like okay. it's also oftentimes because they know what they're talking about but that doesn't make it less annoying right sometimes you are learning yeah sometimes you're learning something but you maybe don't want to learn it like, yeah. But I feel like your brother could explain all those things in a way that wouldn't bother me. Well, a mansplain is one of those words. Like, it's gotten overused. Sometimes it literally is just a man explaining, you know, something that, like, they do know more than you. Like, it's not always. No, I did not know know anything about the stock market. Like, I don't (laughs) fucking know shit about it. Like, (laughs) I went on a date with a real estate developer, and he was like, do you know what they do? And I was like, I kind of could deduce it. And he was like, let me explain it to you. And you were all 20 minutes. I was like, okay, cool. Okay. Most likely to make it weird when the bill comes. Oh, that's so interesting. I feel like maybe Pisces because I think that they get like a little bit uncomfortable. Mm. Like I don't think they would make it weird because they like want you to pay or not. But I think that they would be weird about it. Like they would be conscious of it. Like, mm-hmm. you know, when you're on a date and you guys are talking and maybe you still have like wine left in your glass or like a cocktail left and the bill comes and like one person that you're with is like oddly conscious of it being there. And it's like, let's just like finish our wine and then we'll like address that after. Like we're in the middle of a conversation. I think Pisces would be like very conscious of the fact that the bill is there and like overthinking like, are they going to pay? Am I going to pay? Are we splitting this? Like, yeah. Are we doing this? Not smooth with it. Just floundering. Is yeah. there a sign that's most likely to be like over my dead body? Will you split this with me? Like they're just, they grab the check. They're confident. They got this. Capricorn. Ooh. I feel like Capricorn or Sagittarius Okay. also. Like, mm-hmm. I think a Sagittarius is, like, the kind of person to be in charge and, like, take control, but definitely Capricorn. Also that Leo. That yeah, that Leo, look. too. Yeah, yeah, they would. Okay. Most likely to take you on a surprise hiking date but not give you a heads up on how to dress. <laughs> so you, sh- oh you God, show up in is... heels and they're like, babe, we're doing Runyon. <laughs> I think it's Taurus because <laughs> – I think it's Taurus for sure because, like, they're so, like, grounded and, like, whatever. And they also, like, they almost have a bit of an ego to them where they, like, expect everyone just gets them. Mm -hmm. And it's like, hey, no, not everybody when you say we're doing a day date thinks that we're going on a fucking hike. Like, sorry that I'm wearing my, like, cute, like, Prada mules. Like, I'm not, like, I thought we were going to brunch. Yeah, Yeah, like, I'm wearing ballet flats. Like, what the hell? (laughs) I think that would be a Taurus move to pull. Okay. (laughs) Most likely to show up four inches shorter than his profile said. Oh my God. All, all men. All of them. Every, <laughs> Every single time. one of them. Maybe a Gemini because I love Gemini women, but Gemini men are tough. Like I struggle with them, always have. Like they just, I feel like they're like big on the gaslighting. And like I feel like also the mansplaining, that would be another one, Gemini. I feel like they're the kind of people that like think very highly of themselves. So they would just show up and be four inches shorter. They're like, she's going to like me. Yeah, she's going to fucking like me because I'm perfect. Like, and like I do feel for men. Like I, I know I feel you, for them, you write yeah. six feet and like that just opens up every potential in the world for you. So I feel for people. But you can't be out here four inches shorter. Yeah, no, I don't think four inches shorter. I think give yourself an inch or two. That's fine. We all know that that's what you do. And I do feel bad for like the short kings because it's like I love a short king. Personally, I'm five two though. So like mm-hmm. short king is fine for me. <laughs> But also I feel bad for them because, like, everyone gives them a bad rep. So some of them are nice guys. But, yeah, if you're showing up four or five inches shorter, like, get a grip. Yeah. Okay, I love this one. Most likely to give you the best sex of your life and then ghost. Sagittarius. 
Okay. Marina feels that. You have a thing for a sad man. Okay. Most likely to give you the best sex of your life, then postmate you a bagel the next morning. Cancer. Oh. <laughs> Cancers are like also like kinky shit. Like I think like really very sexual. I think all the water signs are obviously Scorpio. Everyone like says that but I think cancers are the type of people that like they get so invested like sexually and romantically but they also are always thinking of you like always want to buy you gifts like I would be annoyed if I was dating myself personally <laughs> like I'd be like this bitch is always buying me presents she's always like post mating me snacks like most likely to cry during sex also cancer yeah no like also well I think okay cancer yes for sure but I'm gonna not do the cop out answer because I feel like that's the one people think <laughs> I would also say like maybe Capricorn and I know that sounds weird but like I think that they are one of the more emotional signs mm-hmm. they, they just have like this hard exterior right. but when you unresolved really get in there with trauma. them like unresolved trauma like <laughs> d- never been to therapy but when you get in there with a Capricorn like they're like so soft mm-hmm. so soft such softies and like they're the inverse of cancer so I feel like it makes sense okay most likely to spit in your mouth Oh, Aries. <laughs> Why? Just, Are they a water sign? They're just, no, they're a fire sign, and they're just, like, kind of, like, my way or the highway, like, very stubborn, like, this is what we're doing, like, bossy, like, oh, it's, like, rage, like, red, fiery sign. Like, they're the fieriest of all, I think, and I feel like they would just do that and be like, yeah, that's what we're doing. <laughs> and you'd be like, okay. <laughs> Taking control. <laughs> okay, and then most likely to become a great boyfriend. Ooh. Oh, my gosh. Well, I'm dating a Scorpio, so, like, I'd be remiss if I didn't say. But I would say that's, like, they get bad reputations. Mm-hmm. Mine is just great. But Scorpios get a bad reputation. I would say oh, I've always loved dating a Leo because they'll just make you laugh. And, like, they are, like, the sun, and it's really nice to be in someone's orbit that's like that. So I'd say if you're going to go for a fire sign, a Leo. And then I would say also a Cancer because they're so lovey, just sweet, kind, like, always going to make you feel special. I guess. I mean, I obviously – I don't know. Cancer men, people have, like, mixed feelings, obviously. What is your boyfriend? A Libra. A Libra. And it's just like perfect. Balance. It's just like balance. Harmony, yeah. So wonderful. Like no one has any complaints. Like yeah. they're like the least problematic sign. So they're you so know. Pro- unproblematic. We just want to end it on like a positive note. And anyone can be a good partner. You know? 100%. Anybody in the sign. Yeah. Yes. It also depends what you're looking for, right? That's, yeah. Different things might be good to different people. Yeah. 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 You're like, this was so fun. So fun, guys. You're Thank so you wonderful. So much. And everybody should buy the book and check out TikTok and everywhere that you are. So can you tell people like everything to yes. tune into? And your podcast is coming back you took yes. a little hiatus okay so my podcast is coming back on march 1st so it's called miss congeniality that's everywhere podcasts are found i'm on instagram at eli.rallo and on tiktok eli rallo because i couldn't get the same handle i, I have both. a dot too girl I yeah know. i have a dot unfortunately <laughs> Can't relate. <laughs> yeah, it's it's not it's not the best, but we we love it. And then my book's called I Didn't Know I Needed This, and you can buy that anywhere you buy books. Oh my gosh. Well, thank you so Thanks, much. Thanks, guys. Thank Yay. you. And you guys know where to find us, girlsgottoeat.com for everything. We're Girls Gotta Eat Podcast on Instagram and TikTok. I'm Ash Hess. Rain is Raina dot Greenberg. <laughs> <laughs> Our other company, of course, Vibes Only. That's gonna be vibesonly.com and vibes only on Instagram and subscribe on YouTube. Share this episode with a friend, get Eli's book, and we'll see you next week. Have a great week, guys. Bye. Thank you.